G'day there guys, Marky here, back at it again with another episode of r slash relationship advice. Now if you love today's video like I love you, I want you to sit back, relax, chuck a prawn on the barbie, a like on the video, and enjoy today's bloody good content. Posted by user throwrasb, titled, How can I, 20 female, tell my BFF, 20 female, that I'm sleeping with her father, 46 female, and not lose them both? Advice please. So, let me start by saying that I'm not 100% sure how any of this happened. Backstory. When I was a little kid, my POS parents got divorced, and I ended up with my POS mother, and we moved back to her home state, and somehow managed to live with my grandparents who were not POS people. I was thrown into a school with total strangers, and I was given mountains of crap for talking funny, because I was born and raised in the South and was now living in New England. The first person to decide to be nice to me and to be my friend was Kate. Not her real name, of course. Kate quickly became my BFF, and we've been BFFs ever since. Now, because my mum is an awful piece of human garbage, I spent as much time as possible with Kate and her family over the years. Not only was I accepted by them, but eventually I started to look at them as the family I always thought a family should be. By high school, I was calling Don and Joan, Kate's parents, also not real names, mum and dad, respectively. They always welcomed me into their home. I always had food, a place to stay, you name it. They even took me with on a couple of family vacations. I love this family with all of my heart. The story takes a turn for the strange in 2018, when after Kate and I graduated high school and Don and Joan had no more kids in the house as they were all on their own or in college, that Joan decided to come out of the closet as a lesbian, admit to an affair that had lasted the entire time they were married and file for a divorce. I'm sure you can imagine that Don, Kate, her brothers, and well, everybody was devastated. Kate went off to college in California, and neither of her brothers were around, so Don was kind of on his own. Since I wasn't going to further my education and basically stay in town, I promised my BFF to make sure her dad was okay, look in on him often, all that. Well, I tried community college and that didn't work out, but I got lucky and my grandma pulled in a favor and got me a job as a teller in one of the local banks. So, I was at least somewhat productive in society. I'd call Don and text him a few times to check in on him, but things got crazy last summer. I literally ran into him at the grocery store one afternoon after work. I saw what he was buying, and it made me super sad. It was like all these single bachelor tropes all in one. So, being the good BFF that I am, I insisted that Don buy some actual food and that I'd go over to his place after work on Friday and make him a home-cooked meal. I've been cooking since I was young. I kind of had to learn, and we both agreed that he needed it. So, Friday came around and I went over and cooked him a nice chicken parmesan dinner. We had fun visiting for a bit and I went home feeling good about myself. We agreed to do this every week. The next week, after dinner, he asked if I'd stay for a bit and hang out. So we fired up Xfinity on demand and got cozy on the couch. I don't know exactly what led to this next part to happen, but it happened. Maybe it was the love scene and what we were watching, I don't know. All I know is that he seemed super lonely and I felt bad for him, so I initiated things and gave him head. When I left that night, things were a little awkward, but we decided to continue our Friday dinner tradition and the next week, after the movie, he asked if I could stay around a little longer. Well, I ended up staying the night. That was when we first had sex. Friday night dinner became Friday night dinner and sex, and that lasted another eight or nine weeks. Then we started being more open about what we were doing. Going out to eat during the week, going to a movie or shopping, all that stuff. Despite a lot of people we know giving us the side eye for it. All the while, I was keeping everything a secret from Kate, my BFF. Fast forward to COVID and that, combined with my lack of ability to judge friends well, resulted in my roommates bailing on me and leaving me on the hook for our entire apartment. I got lucky in that our landlord let me out of the lease, but that put me in a spot. I was going to have to move back in with my POS mother. 
I was desperate to avoid that, and then Don stepped in and saved me, kind of. He asked me to move in with him, and I did, and we've been living as a couple ever since. Recently, Don has stopped using a condom when we have sex, and he asked me to quit taking birth control too. He said he wants to marry me and start a family and the whole deal. And now I'm wondering, how the frick do I tell Kate about this? I love Kate on so many levels and I don't want to lose her, but I'm terrified that she'll be mad. I don't know if I can give up Don to keep Kate though. I do know that I'd die a little inside if I stayed with Don and that ruined his relationship with his daughter though. I know this is a you want your cake and eat it too moment, but what's the point of having the cake if you can't eat the frickin' thing? Please, someone, anyone give me some idea about how to proceed. Please. Bruh, this is mad disgusting. Kate is not going to take this well. Most people would not take their friends fudging their parents well at all. This is a man you called dad. How do we get to the father-daughter type relationship to wanting to screw, marry, and have kids? Your friendship is going to be over. Oh, it's all the rage in porn today. I don't know why. Regarding you guys banging and whatnot, to be honest, that didn't bother me if you both enjoy it. But the fact he's wanting to get you pregnant is a big nope. If you're young and you're just having fun and you initiated it, whatever. I'm not much of an ageist. A baby with this man is not something you can just walk away from easily when you realize that if you stay with this man in 20-ish years, you'll be 38, and having to plan on starting to take care of him. Is that really what you want? This is the part that bugs me the most too. I mean, I can sit here and probably figure out what happened and why this happened, but none of that matters. This is the part that matters. You're only 20. You need time to go do things and learn who you really are. There's plenty of time for a baby later. That's one of those things that I think it's important to do. I wish you luck. I hate to say it, but she clearly has daddy issues. I had them too at one point and was in very deep denial that I had them. But boy, this girl needs a tried and true male figure in her life that won't turn romantic and she needs therapy. They are both relying on each other as a crutch for things that they're going through. That's the only part I have a big issue with too. I feel like Don is so depressed and lonely that he feels like OP is his only chance at happiness again. Knows that it's a risky relationship to begin with, that OP would walk away from if she knew what was best for her and her friendship, and is trying to trap her into the relationship with a baby. That way, not only would she have to stay, but everyone else would be forced to accept them staying together too, including his daughter. 20 is just way too young to be considering marriage and babies, even if this wasn't a weird relationship to begin with. This is going to destroy Kate. You can find another man. She only has one father. You're so young. You have many years to find someone to settle down with. This seems like an absolute crap show of a relationship. Please stay on birth control. Please don't bring a child into this situation. Update, how can I tell my BFF that I'm sleeping with her father and not lose them both? Hello all, update time. So, I was awake late into the night after making the post and reading everyone's comments. I appreciate everyone who weighed in with something other than reminding me that I'm a horrible, screwed up piece of crap as a person. I had come to that conclusion on my own, but it was nice to have it verified, so thanks. I gave a lot of thought to the questions posed to me from Hello, I See You 2020, and came to some conclusions. I want to get better. The day after posting, I was visibly bothered by deep thoughts at work, and one of my co-workers was concerned and asked me about what was bothering me. So, I told her the whole story. Together, we looked into if my insurance would cover therapy. It does, and even with COVID making it a video chat only kind of deal, I started yesterday at lunch, Tuesday the 21st. I decided to get the hell out of the situation as well. I moved out of the house this past weekend and into a spare room that one of my coworkers offered for me to use until I can get some money to relocate once the pandemic ends and I can get a transfer to a different branch, hopefully out of state. This is awkward, and life just took a crappy turn, but I'm told that getting through this mess that I made will make me a better person in the end. 
I spent Friday night down at the shore at my grandpa's house so I could be somewhere that I love and feel safe at for the next part. I called Kate. It went like anyone expected. No lies. Worst conversation I've ever had. I told her when it was all said and done that I wasn't expecting her to ever forgive me as I don't know if I deserve it. She knows that I'm not there anymore and I'm going to try my hardest to put as much distance as possible between me and her family ASAP. I ended the call by telling her that I won't be initiating contact anymore. I'm going to give her all the space and time she needs, even if that means I'll never talk to her again. I really do love her more than life itself, and I hope that we can eventually recover, but I doubt we will. This is my own fault, and I'm trying to take accountability here. Thanks for the input, everybody. Something is missing here. How'd it go with her dad? By the way, I wish you good luck in your new life. It will be hard and lonely at first for sure, but at the end, you'll make new friends and gain more respect for yourself. So, hold on. Don wasn't happy with the whole thing and asked if there was anything he could do to change my mind. I haven't seen him or talked to him since I got my stuff out of his house though. I'm kind of afraid to. Well, you did the right thing. He should be able to find someone to have a healthy relationship. Yours was doomed since the beginning and he was playing the lonely guard. There is no excuse for him, and worse to ask you to stop your birth control. He was not doing it with good intentions, and I think you've escaped in the right time. Don't engage with him, marriages break all the time, and relationships end, and it's not the end of the world. It was his responsibility to learn how to take care of himself. Facts. I don't see a lot of people holding him accountable as well for his play in this. The whole thing was creepy. He shouldn't have took her on her advances regardless of what he was going through. I could never do that to someone, especially someone I practically raised. How did Kate take it? She thought that I was joking at first. A really sick joke, sure, but a joke just the same. Kate was super hurt and confused by the whole thing. She's really angry with both me and her dad, of course. I understand that. I also understand that if she can find it in her heart to forgive me, she will, but I'm not going to make it difficult on her by trying to force the issue. I'm not initiating contact with her until she reaches out first. You did the right thing in the end. I wish you all the best for the future. You made the grown-up decision. Man, that must have really sucked. Stay strong. Love is complicated. You will come out of this a better person and stronger for it. Did you tell her that you initiated it with her dad? I did. I'm trying for total accountability here. Good for you. You may never get your friendship back, and that's a consequence you may have to face. But you did the right thing. A really difficult thing, and a thing that most people would just keep a secret to save their own butts. You were not a terrible person, you made an awful mistake, had a serious lapse in judgement, but you know what? That just makes you human. Owning up to your mistake, and taking accountability, in my eyes, makes you a good person. Admitting your failures is not an easy thing to do. This is going to be a hard, painful lesson, but you'll come out of it stronger and smarter. I'm proud of you for doing the right thing at your own expense. Not many people have that strength. Honestly, as much as I think people are right to call you out on this, I also am really disgusted by Don's role in all of this. He's known you since you were a kid, and he wanted to sleep with slash possibly marry you? It makes me wonder how long he's felt that way, and if he was potentially grooming you. I'm glad to hear you're getting therapy, and hope you're able to find peace. Posted by user, throw RA, I don't know, help, 12921. Titled, Significant Other, 29 female, is frugal to the point where I, 30 male, can't handle it anymore. I did groceries alone today because she is in tears because I spent $8 more than her budget. We have been dating for around three years now and moved in together a year and a half ago. Back then, she was somewhat of a penny pincher and always insisted on, instead of eating out, we would buy or make something, which I was okay with because we both love to cook. Lately with COVID, she's gone from bearable to completely and utterly pinching every penny. We both work in tech and we make great money. To give some context, we live in NYC and her monthly budget is less than $600, including rent, utilities, etc. 
The rest of the money goes somewhere that I am not privy to, which is her finances. However, we both have no real debt at this point. Right now, we live in a tiny, and I mean tiny, bachelors. Originally, I moved in with her, and we had plans to get a proper apartment when her lease was up, rather than me signing another lease. However, those plans have gone on hold due to COVID and her paranoia about job security. She works for a very stable company. Lately, she has become one of those extreme couponers, even if it's just saving a few dollars here and there. Today, the grocery store was extremely busy, and I didn't want to fiddle with the coupons, etc. that she gave me. So, I just said screw it. The result was the cost going about $8 over our weekly budget. I really didn't care at all since I was paying for the groceries. When I got home, she immediately took the receipt and started to get very upset about how I overspent, etc. I said I paid for groceries, and she started to get very upset. I tried this afternoon to sit down with her and ask her to explain why she's being so extremely frugal, and her response is that she isn't sure of the future for her career, and needs to pinch every penny. The thing is, by my math, she has saved up a ton of money. I know she sold her stock options last year for a fairly large amount. I just cannot understand how she considers herself so poor. The other thing that's bothering me is that she didn't grow up in a poor family or anything. Her family is extremely well off from what I've seen. She doesn't seem to want to discuss her financial situation, and I'm struggling to understand where this is coming from. What can I do? Update, I showed her my finances and asked her to share hers because I said her behavior is not healthy. She refused to show me anything. She says she doesn't have any sort of debt and asked me to trust her about it. It doesn't make me feel happy. Sounds like she has some underlying paranoia, anxiety, and control issues. All of this will intensify as you share financial responsibilities, such as a house or kids. Try therapy, but I don't know. You may never be able to compromise if she's so extreme. Do you know how I could bring something like that up? This is 100% a mental health issue, and you can't fix it. She needs professional help. This is akin to hoarding. It's an illness. I agree. My mum raised us thinking we were fudging poor. I mean, eating potatoes every day poor. And we lived in a mansion with marble floors, stairs, and windowsills. I legit didn't realize we were well off until I was like 22. Yeah, had a friend that made big bucks in a low cost of living area in the Midwest. He married an extremely frugal woman from Maine, and he couldn't even buy her flowers without her immediately going to the store to return them and use the money to buy groceries. He couldn't buy anything for fun. They couldn't travel unless there was an emergency reason, it was work-related, or they could drive there and stay with someone. They never ate out, but instead ate like cheap cuts of meat from shady butchers, and she didn't want to spend money fixing up their house, so they did a lot of DIY repairs that were very DIY. There would always be a crap in their toilet too, because to save money, they flushed like once or twice a day. That weirded me out the most. I wanted to befriend her since we were roughly the same age, but she didn't spend money going out for coffee or anything. Just come to my house and smell the crap from my toilet. My friend was so embarrassed and it was a huge strain on their marriage. Financial incompatibility is a huge stress point in marriage. She needs therapy to get some perspective and recognize truly upsetting situations versus self-created extreme adherence to her expectations. Do you have suggestions for how I can bring this up to her? She acts like what she does is completely normal, and no amount of me pointing out that we make a stupid amount of money combined has seemed to make her more at ease. Honestly, OP, Tell her she gets help or the two of you are over. I get you don't want to do that, but this is not going to end well. Besides her anxiety, or whatever it is regarding this, she may be lying as well, since she won't share info about her finances. I mean, I keep reading on Reddit that the husband writes, My wife lied to me about her debt. She said she had some like 5,000 or 10,000, debt, but after marrying her, he found out she had like 110,000 in debt. No, this doesn't mean your girlfriend has tons of debts, 
but she's flat out refusing to share info about her finances, and there is a reason. It could be other things as others have said. I'm not saying she's lying, but just that she might be. There is definitely something going on with her about this, either in her mind or something else. This needs to be resolved. If it isn't, the two of you aren't going to work out. Update, significant other is frugal to the point where I cannot handle it anymore. I did groceries alone today and she's in tears because I spent $8 more than her budget. I wanted to thank people for giving some good advice. She was hiding a lot from me. She has been bankrolling her parents' way of life. I've only met her parents a few times, and I'm an idiot for not seeing it earlier. Her dad isn't a doctor, he's a dentist, and his practice has not really been affordable for a long time, according to her. So, she has basically been giving almost all of her paycheck to her family to cover this deficit. In general, I think her parents are total pieces of crap. Since last time I was there, they were very well off. Big house, multiple cars, etc. She showed me her finances after I gave her an ultimatum that she needed to go to therapy for her penny pinching, or I didn't see this relationship working out. She is more or less completely broke. She has no savings, no nothing. All the money goes to her parents. I told her how wrong this is, and I told her how wrong it is for her to project this unhealthy behavior onto how I spend my own money. I also fully told her that I'm going to move out when her lease is up into an apartment that is suitable for two adults constantly working from home, and I told her we can move out together, but I'm not going to be forcing myself to her extremely frugal behavior. Her reasoning behind all this is basically, she has this huge feeling of debt to her parents, and she doesn't need nice things to be happy. I don't really know what's going to happen, but today we ordered fancy delivery food, something we haven't done in ages, and I paid for it without her making a fuss. She has also agreed to see a therapist, but she isn't fully set on at least reducing the fact she is giving basically 90% of her paycheck to her parents. I don't know. I don't really get it, and I probably went about it the wrong way, but it is something. Your partner is being financially abused. Your partner is being abused by her parents, she needs support in coming to terms with what's happening and being independent from them. Yeah, I agree. I just really don't know, aside from getting her to a therapist, how else to help her. She makes a lot of money, and it is completely soul-crushing to see she has nothing saved for her future after working five plus years. I hope you're able to find a therapist who specializes in financial abuse, not just financial issues. Financial abuse also often falls under domestic abuse categories. So, while it may feel extreme, depending on where you are, family slash domestic violence or women's services may be able to provide information and leads. I wish you both good luck in this journey. Let me guess. Her parents are extremely controlling and emotionally manipulative, to the point she feels like it's easier to just hand them all her money than not because of the crap fit they'll throw otherwise. No adult does this because they actually genuinely want to. I've met her parents, I think a total of four times, as they live several states away. My significant other doesn't really visit them very often, and when we did go to visit them, we didn't spend a huge amount of time with them. I initially got the impression that I wasn't good enough in their eyes, but they never really said or did anything. It was very awkward the first time meeting her parents. Posted by user ThrowRANJBJM, titled, My boyfriend says I need to lose weight, even though I've already lost 30 pounds. I, 22 female, live with my boyfriend, 26, who calls me fat, even though I weighed 130 pounds before I started dieting and exercising. Even at 100 pounds, he still insists that I'm not losing enough, and he isn't as attracted to me as he used to be. I'm trying my best to lose weight, but I think losing any more is a bad idea, as I'm very skinny now. It's upsetting when he claims that I'm overweight all of the time, even though I completely cut out junk food from my diet and jog for at least an hour a day. I don't think losing any more is safe for me. How should I expect this to my boyfriend? I guess they're trying to say, how should I say this to him? Edit, I'm five foot. Edit two, 
I asked out of curiosity how much he wanted me to weigh, and he told me around 70 to 80 pounds. I don't think it's really possible to live at 80 pounds, 5 foot tall. What is, what is that? Isn't that like extreme malnourishment to that point? I read a post a couple of months ago about a girl who was upset because her boyfriend constantly put her down, saying that she smelled really bad, she was showering multiple times a day, using antiperspirant, etc., but he still insisted that she smelled terribly. No one else thought she smelled bad, by the way. Things came to a head, and basically during an argument, he admitted that he was very insecure, and thought that if he told her she smelled bad, she wouldn't have the self-confidence to leave him and find another boyfriend. From what you're saying, I guess that this is what's going on with your boyfriend. Don't ever put your health at risk over a partner, it's just not worth it. My ex-husband did this to me. He tried everything he could to keep me from exercising, made comments about how horrible I looked when I started losing weight and feeling more confident. He would tell me how ugly I was and set me up to talk about my confidence, only to laugh at me for thinking I was worth anything. He was scared if I had confidence in myself, that I would leave. Well, he was right. And now he's my ex, and I couldn't be happier. Took me a very long time to realize how toxic he was to my self-esteem. I really don't understand that logic. Who wants a partner that isn't confident in themselves? And who thinks tearing down someone's confidence is an acceptable way to get someone to stay? Maybe instead, they should try being the most supportive partner ever, but we know that they are mean because they are incapable of doing so. Glad you escaped that piece of crap. Someone who lacks their total confidence. Took 15 years for me to come to my senses, but now I'm happily married with a partner that is incredibly supportive. We actually met while going for a run. That's amazing, isn't it? When you're with an abuser, you almost don't know that there are better options. It's almost created an issue for me because I refuse to date someone who is anything less than enthusiastically supportive, so I've learned to break it off with someone very easily and early on. Lose 200 pounds by dropping him in the dirt. This is a serious red flag problem. I'd lose 156.3 pounds, then lose that extra 156.3 pounds holding you back. I try not to say this often, but you should probably get out of that relationship. That's incredibly toxic and manipulative. It's also physically dangerous for you. You need someone to build you up and love you, not someone who will make you feel unattractive if you're not a skeleton. Screw him. Yeah, she's also lost quite a lot of weight, and losing any more would definitely be going into the danger zone. Depending on her height, she may also be underweight. I'm five foot. Please don't lose any more weight. Your boyfriend sounds abusive to me, so lose the boyfriend and you'll lose all the extra weight you need. I'm five foot two, and I dropped to 75 pounds at one point because I was really sick. I stopped getting my period for a year, and literally looked like a skeleton. It was disgusting. It also made it so that afterwards, I gain weight super easily. Please don't do this to yourself. Update. My boyfriend says I need to lose weight, even though I'm only 100 pounds. For some reason, I can't access my original throwaway account, but I decided that I should still update you guys. I ended up leaving my boyfriend because if I got to 70 to 80 pounds, I would likely die, since I'm already starting to feel really bad from my weight. I'm going to quit my daily jogs for a while, and only do it once a week. I've also decided to give up starving myself, and eat more than salads so I can gain weight again. Hopefully I can get back to 130 pounds, as that's when I felt healthy. Thanks for all the kind comments on my last post, as it really helped make this decision. Edit. Even at 130 pounds, I wasn't overweight according to my doctor. Posted by user ThrowRA78 Wood <laughs> titled My 22 male vegan girlfriend 21 female wants me to get rid of my cat. I can't believe I'm about to type this, but here we go. I've been dating my girlfriend for seven months. She's amazing and we are super compatible in a lot of ways. She's an outspoken vegan, and she made it clear at the start of our relationship that it was important to her that any potential partner had similar cruelty-free values. Me, already being a pescatarian, had little difficulty transitioning to a fully plant-based diet. My girlfriend was proud of me going cruelty-free, and everything seemed well. 
we became the vegan couple on our college campus. Then, there's my cat, Mittens. I've had her for three years, and I adore her. She's such a sweet and cuddly cat. However, my girlfriend was always a little apprehensive around her, and she blamed it on not growing up around cats. After a while, we sort of made a tacit agreement to mostly hang out at her apartment instead of mine, so Mittens never really came up again in conversation. Fast forward through all the quarantine stuff, my girlfriend and I have spent a lot of time together during this pandemic, and we've started talking about taking our relationship to the next level. We began seriously looking at either buying a new apartment together, or having one of us move in with the other. However, after a lot of talking and planning, my girlfriend sat me down and dropped a bombshell on me. She said that with the next phase of our relationship, she did not see a future with me unless I was willing to give away mittens. She said that she believed owning a cat is unconscionable for vegans, because they hunt mice and eat meat, and because the very act of owning a pet is a violation of vegan principles. I was stunned. I told her that I was absolutely not willing to give up mittens, and she had no choice but to eat meat, so I was reducing harm as much as possible by buying reputable brands of cat food. Plenty of vegans own cats and think along those same lines. My girlfriend got mad and said, how much flesh does your cat eat? How many animals died to make all that food? Would you be okay with that being human flesh? Stop threatening me with a good time, all right? I got mad and told my girlfriend that I would have really appreciated her telling me about her cat opinions before we got serious. She went on and on about cats killing animals, and I ended the conversation there. I was so angry that I left my girlfriend's apartment, and I snuggled with mittens when I got home. Although the mood soured a bit when my girlfriend sent me a link on a Reddit thread advocating for the extinction of domestic cats. <sighs> I think it goes without saying that I'm not getting rid of my cat. However, it pains me to think that an otherwise wonderful relationship could be ending because of a difference in ideology. I don't even really understand where my girlfriend is coming from, because like I said, a lot of vegans own cats. Now, granted, cat ownership can be a controversial topic in vegan circles, and I probably would not have gotten a cat if I had been vegan at the time. But I have mittens now, and she deserves to eat. Yes, I researched vegan cat food, but Mittens has some digestive issues, and my vet strongly cautions against it. I've talked to some of my vegan and vegetarian friends, and they all think my girlfriend has lost her mind. Some have suggested that it's not about Mittens, and my girlfriend just wants an excuse to end it. They probably don't understand why I haven't broken up yet, but I care about my girlfriend so much. I'd hate for this bizarre curveball to be the end of a beautiful thing, I want to try and work something out. Where do I even go from here? I will not compromise on mittens, and I don't think my girlfriend will compromise either. Edit. Wow, this completely blew up while I was asleep. I'm trying to read every comment, but there are a lot. Also, please allow me to take this moment to reiterate that my girlfriend's views are not representative of those held by the wider vegan community. She suggested to give it away? It makes no sense whatsoever. Will it consume less meat with another owner? Of course not. It's like boasting about your lack of garbage because you dump it all in your neighbor's yard. This is what I was thinking. It's not about veganism, it's about control. Absolutely. What this reminds me of is parents so committed to their religion, they will disown their own children for not conforming, even though they claim to love them. Unfortunately, some vegans can find their ideology so compelling, they too would choose it before anything else. And in this case, she seems to have never even considered the fact she's demanding OP give up a cat he loves. Whilst we're on the subject, OP, cats are obligate carnivores, and should never be fed a vegan diet, regardless of health status. Here in the UK, doing so would earn you a fine of up to £1,000. It's considered animal cruelty. You can also get prison time for animal cruelty in the UK, including feeding cats inadequately. As a fellow vegan, no, this isn't even cool. If she truly cared about animals, she wouldn't ask you to rehome your cat. It has a loving home. Her way of thinking is ass backwards. If someone told me I'm not a real vegan because I have a dog, I would laugh my ass off and tell them they can have their stupid label, the dog stays, he's family just like I'm sure your cat is your family. Yep, I came here to say this. 
I'm vegan, and I see no issue in giving animals loving homes, regardless of the animal's diet, especially if your pet would be homeless otherwise. Don't give your cat away, they are family. Yeah, the organization which came up with the term vegan defines it as seeking to exclude, as far as is possible and practicable, all forms of exploitation of, and cruelty to, animals for food. Ethical systems can't have simple, neat solutions for every question. Humans can easily live without meat, cats cannot. So you need to choose between the suffering of the cat or the animal which it eats. When there is no option, which doesn't involve harming animals, you're not not vegan for having to choose one of them. Yep, exactly this. It's definitely a paradox of sorts, though. The carnivorous and omnivorous animals that already exist will be hunting for food regardless. I don't see it as necessarily negative because they, cats, dogs, etc., need meat to live, and humans do not. I love my cat, whom I've had over half my life, and will not put her in any discomfort solely because I would prefer to not support the meat industry in any way. It's a tough choice to make, but I've come to terms with the fact that cats need to eat meat. I don't, so overall, it's a net positive impact. Some vegans choose to only have pets who are herbivorous in nature, like bunnies. But for me, I will always choose an animal from the local shelter to rescue. My vegan girlfriend wants me to get rid of my cat, update. First of all, let me say thank you for everyone who offered advice. There are over 7,000 comments on my original post, and I have dozens of PMs. Frankly, I'm still pretty overwhelmed with the magnitude of the response. I did my best to read most everyone's comments, but obviously I couldn't get to everything. I would also like to preempt this post by saying, as many users pointed out, that my girlfriend's extreme views on domestic cats are not representative of the vegan and vegetarian community as a whole. I do think that, sometimes, new vegans can be a little overzealous. In reality, most of us are just doing the best that we can not to hurt animals. I did not expect to generate a big debate in the comments. So, we broke up, obviously. I would never ever give up my cat mittens. Many users said that this situation was about control, not veganism, and looking back, I do see a pattern of control on my girlfriend's part. I was blind to it, I guess. I called my girlfriend and said I was not willing to give up mittens under any circumstances, and given the recent issues we'd had, and our incompatible views, I thought it was best that we parted ways. I said she deserved a better partner that shared her values. She then asked if we were breaking up, and I said yes. There was some anger on her end, but otherwise the situation actually went better than I expected. So yeah, that's really it. Oh, and several users did ask to see a picture of mittens, I have uploaded one to Imga. Thanks again to everyone who offered advice, it really helped. Good for you. The cat is being a cat. The cat cannot choose and must eat meat to survive. If you treat the cat well, there's nothing wrong with being vegan and owning a cat. What's her suggestion? We kill off cats? Cause that's not vegan. She literally sent him an article that same night advocating for the extinction of the house cat species. So now we're left with the classic question of free range chicken or the organic GMO free egg. Is she vegan because she's crazy or is she crazy because of the veganism? Obviously not all vegans, but this lady is certainly off the deep end. Imagine being so concerned for animal welfare that you support systemic violence against animals. What the hell? You made the right choice, OP. Yeah. Humans are the very last species on Earth that should ever advocate for the extinction of another species to protect ecosystems. Ah, oh, come on, she was a bit catty about it, but, but OP really handed it perfectly. Look, she obviously thought she had more of her claws in him. OP really got himself out of a hairy situation here. <laughs> no kitten around. Posted by user... Throw RA stabbed in the back. Titled, My 28 female, best friend, 29 female, since birth, gave me a bad reference for a job she told me to apply to. Background. Our parents have known each other since we were born. My parents moved across the street from her parents. Her mom baked my mom and dad a cake, and they've been friends ever since. They even got pregnant around the same time and gave birth a few months apart. 
Tori, fake name obviously, and I literally grew up together and have always been close. We were inseparable as kids and have always called each other sisters. Freshman year of high school, her dad got a job opportunity and they ended up moving to Cali. We were in Ohio at the time, so it was kind of hard to maintain a long distance friendship because of the time difference and everything that was going on in our lives, but we still remained close, alternating visiting each other during our summer breaks. We applied and got into the same college after high school, so we were finally reunited at college as we dormed together and things were perfect. Present day. We are both married to our husbands. We live in the same town. Our husbands are best friends as well. Due to this COVID pandemic, I was laid off from my telemarketing job. It was fine at first because my husband was able to pick up an extra few shifts and maintain our household, but his overtime started getting cut, so now we were only living off of one income and have had to use our savings to pay off a few bills. As of recently, I've been looking for a new job and it's been hard because no one has been hiring. Tori and I get together once every other week for drinks, and I mentioned to her that I was having a hard time job searching, and she suggested that I apply at her job, and that she would put in a good word for me, and I'd be hired. We talked about how fun it would be to work together. Tori is in a similar field as I was. Not exactly the same, but she said that I'd have no problem getting in, and that they'd train me for whatever I didn't know. Later that week, I applied and was called a few days later for a phone interview. We went over my application, and she asked how I was referred to the job. I mentioned Tori, and she genuinely sounded excited and bragged about what a great employee Tori is, and how if she's referring me, I'd probably be a perfect fit. We finished up the phone interview, and she said that she would ask Tori a few follow-up questions, but that the job was pretty much mine, and to be expecting a call back by a certain day. I texted Tori telling her how things went, and thanking her immensely. However, the day came that I was supposed to hear something back, and I haven't heard anything. At Tori and I's get-together, I asked her if her boss ever asked about me, and Tori said no, and that she would let me know if she did. Two weeks passed, and still no word. I asked Tori again, and all she said was that they decided to hire someone else because they had more experience. So, I dropped it after that. A month later, and I'm finally back working, and my husband and I are getting back on our feet. I suggested that we invite Tori and her husband over for dinner, and my husband immediately said no. I've noticed that my husband and her husband haven't been talking. I asked about it, and he brushed it off. I asked Tori about it at our get-together, and she brushed it off as well. However, I knew that was odd, as they talked almost daily, and got together weekly for beer and poker with a few other friends, and that hasn't been happening either. I decided to press the issue with my husband, and he finally broke down and said that the reason why him and Matt weren't speaking was because of Tori. He explained that the job Tori said she would speak up for me to get, she actually did the opposite. I asked what he meant, and he said that her boss actually did ask Tori about me, and she said a few things to deter her from hiring me. I asked why he kept this from me for so long, and he said it was better that I didn't know because he didn't want to ruin our friendship. Matt actually told him what Tori did, and he told Matt to tell Tori to do the right thing. They got into an argument, and that's why they weren't speaking. I called Tori, and she admitted that my husband was telling the truth, and said the reason why she didn't vouch for me was because she didn't want things to change between us, because at work, she was a completely different person, whatever that meant. So after thinking about asking me to apply, she decided to change her mind, but couldn't bring herself to do that. I was absolutely disgusted. She knew how much my husband and I were struggling, and decided to sabotage my chances at getting a job for no real reason. I hung up and blocked her number. It's been nearly a month and we haven't talked yet. However, my husband and her husband are back on speaking terms, and my husband wants me to make up with Tori and let it go so that things can go back to how they were. However, I'm not sure if they can. I feel like I've been stabbed in the back. Do I have a right to feel how I feel? Or is it time to move on and let bygones be bygones? I admit that I do miss her, but I feel like I can't trust her anymore. Had she told me the truth from the beginning, I would have been okay. But she lied to my face on multiple occasions. Boy, this was a read and a half. 
First of all, screw Tori. She screwed up. You have every right to feel betrayed and be mad for about four to six months. She broke your trust. In my country, trust is fundamental in a friendship. Do you think you can trust her again after this? Yeah. Your oldest and literal lifelong friend did something detrimental to the well-being of your family over some petty, unnecessary bullcrap. Why would your husband want you to forgive her? Like, why the freak wouldn't Tori figure that out before she told her about the job or before Opie applied and had an interview? That's so hurtful and honestly embarrassing. She's a crap friend. Exactly. I don't want my friends at my job and I don't really make friends of my coworkers. We're friendly and nice to each other, of course, but I prefer to keep those two parts of my life separate. But that's exactly why I'm not offering to refer any of my friends for available jobs. She is a fake and basically admitted it. She didn't want her personal and business personas to meet, fine. But then why did she refer you for the job in the first place? What she did is crappy in the extreme and you have every right to cut her out of your life. It's what I would do. Certainly, it is never going back to what it was before. She screwed you over and lied to you. That said, I can't believe there are companies still officially working on personal referrals. It opens them up to so much potential trouble. If Tori lied to prevent you getting the job, and it sounds like she did, then she is liable. I'm not saying you should take action, but she opened herself up to that by causing financial damage to you via lies. Side note, as a non-American, the idea of being afraid of litigation to not take referrals is alien to me. Big tech, including Google, outside the States pay thousands to employees for a successful referral. I'm non-American too, and for at least two companies I've worked for, you're not able to go anywhere near the recruitment of someone you know in any way. You can get a bounty for referring someone who is successfully employed, but that is as far as it goes, and you sure as hell wouldn't be asked to vouch for the person that you referred. Update. My best friend since birth gave me a bad reference for a job she told me to apply to. Thank you for all your comments and advice. I'm glad to know I wasn't overthinking the situation. I called Tori yesterday and gave her the opportunity to meet up, apologize, and explain more in depth. She accepted my offer and we had lunch at a nearby restaurant today. Some of you guessed that the reason that she didn't want me at her job was because she could have been hiding something, and that was correct. She told me that she was indeed having an affair with a coworker. I didn't buy it at all. It just didn't make sense because if that was the case, why would she tell her husband that she sabotaged me rather than keep that to herself? Turns out that my husband was pressuring him for answers as well, and her husband kept reminding her to ask her boss why I didn't get the job. That's when she told him what she did. She also gave him a completely different explanation of why she didn't want me working there. She showed me months of steamy texts and sexts between her and a coworker, so I knew that she was telling the truth. I asked her why she didn't just tell me. She said that she was scared that people at her job would ask me questions and it would come out that she's married. The guy at her job that she's been seeing doesn't even know and thinks they're in an exclusive relationship. She said that if I found out about the affair, she was afraid that I'd tell my husband, and since our husbands are best friends, he would tell hers. She gets together with her co-worker for a few hours after work and on weekends. Apparently, she doesn't even work weekends. Her husband thinks that she's at work all this time. She said that having me work there would ruin things, as our schedules wouldn't add up, and it would get back to her husband, and he would question her about why. I asked her why she would have me apply and say that she would get me in, knowing she had no intentions of having me work with her. She said she didn't think I'd really take her up on her offer, as I've made comments before about her work sounding boring, and that she was really hoping that if she dragged it out long enough, I'd get tired of waiting and look elsewhere. The million dollar question that I asked her was, what did you say to your boss to change her mind about offering me the job? She said that she told her boss that having me work there would honestly probably just be a distraction and she wouldn't perform her best, and that I was known to be lazy and a slacker, which is definitely not true. She did offer her sincere apology and said that she felt terrible knowing what all John and I were going through and she didn't help. But I just can't see myself forgiving her or even trusting her again after this situation. 
Basically, the best friend that I've known all these years has turned into a complete stranger. I feel like I don't even know her anymore. This isn't something I want in my life, especially after she caused me to look so foolish by badmouthing me to her boss. I told her that our friendship was over and that she'd better have a talk with her husband because no way was I holding this back from mine. A few hours later, my husband got a call from hers. Tori told him the news, and they are now separating, and he will now file for a divorce in the upcoming weeks. Tori is, believe it or not, moving in with her co-worker. I haven't heard from her since leaving the restaurant, and honestly, don't plan on talking to her ever again. Almost 30 years of friendship gone over a string of lies. As for my husband, him and I never had a long talk after revealing to me that he already knew what Tori did. I explained to him that it is never okay to keep things like that from me, no matter what. I understand him and Matt have a very good friendship, but me and my feelings should come first in the future situations like this. He agreed, and will eventually gain my trust back. Edit, just to clear things up, my husband never knew about Tori's affair. All he knew was that Tori sabotaged the job. Also, a lot of you are saying the co-worker deserves to know, and I agree. I emailed the HR department at her job and requested a meeting with the woman I had a phone interview with. The meeting is Friday, and I will tell her then about Tori's lie and about the affair, and I will let her handle it how she wants to from there. After this, I am completely done with her. Edit 2. A lot of you think that me talking to her boss is a bad idea. If anything, I probably won't bring up the affair situation, but I do want to bring it to her attention that Tori lied to her. I don't think her boss would appreciate having employees that would easily lie to her face to cover up shady stuff that they've been doing. I may just send her an email with that part of the recording attached and a quick explanation instead of going to meet her. And yes, I recorded our encounter. If I figure out how, I could possibly post it if anyone would be interested in hearing. I honestly don't care if telling her boss is a screwed up thing to do. She didn't give a far about me when she watched me struggle for months and prevented me from getting a job that I desperately needed at the time. So why should I give a freak about her? She's not my friend anymore anyway. She needs to learn that she can't just do whatever she wants with zero consequences. So stop telling me not to say anything. Posted by user throwra556fb, titled, My 26 male girlfriend, 25 female, has grown distant after I got beat up for defending a group of girls being harassed. Mandatory, I've been with my girlfriend Sarah for three years and been living together for one and a half. She's honestly everything I've ever wanted and I'm planning on proposing somewhere next year. So... Three weeks ago, I was out with Sarah at a local bar drinking and having a great time with her, as it was just after quarantine had ended where I live. At around 3am, we decided to head home. As we headed to the parking lot where we had parked, we noticed a group of two girls and a guy who was clearly drunk trying to hit on them and get them to go to his house. The girls were clearly very uncomfortable and trying to find a way out. Sarah told me that we had to do something, and I told her to go call the cops and get someone as well, because the very least I wanted was her to get hurt during this. So, I approached the group and tried to pretend I was the boyfriend of the one of the two girls, and long story short, I got my ass kicked. The guy was at least 6 foot 4 and 220 pounds, whereas I'm 5 foot 11 and 167 pounds, I'm fairly muscular myself, but there was no way I could have taken someone that big. I knew it from the start. At least from all the noise we had made, a lot of people rushed to the scene, and the girls got away safe. I was rushed to the ER because the motherfucker had broken my ribs, which had punctured my right lung. Yay! After that incident, Sarah has grown distant from me. Even though she visited and stayed with me at the hospital, she hasn't been the same since and I thought she just needed more time to move past this. However, five days ago, she told me that she's not the same person after what happened, and she doesn't know if she feels safe with me after I got beat up like that. Honestly, hearing that hurt me more than when I got my ribs broke. She has moved to her parents for the time being, and told me she needs time. Meanwhile, 
I had no one here to help me, so my brother left his two boys and wife to move in with me. I know I'm just venting at this point, but I don't want this to be over like that. Reddit, is there anything I can do to salvage the situation? I don't have advice, honestly. I just need to say that what you did was absolutely amazing, and that any person who doesn't appreciate and respect that isn't worth it. I suppose it's fine if that's something important for her, but I know I'd rather have someone who's willing to fight, even if they lose, than just someone physically tough who might not morally care enough. You defended not only those girls, but your girlfriend and yourself. I think you should just give her time, and if she decides to move on, to just focus on knowing who you are and that you did the right thing. Hell yes, I so agree. I find it more respectable when someone who might lose tries to stand up to bullies anyway. It's a risk, and that's far braver than someone huge and strong standing up to a wimpy little bully. OP did the right thing, even though he had to push through fear to do it. I'm floored that his girlfriend disrespects that. Frankly, OP got a get out of jail free card, and I think he should use it on this crappy fair weather girlfriend. Can't agree with this enough. OP, you're my hero for doing this, sir. You're more man than most men will ever be. You did something where others would have done nothing. I'm so sorry you were going through this. OP replies, what hurts me most is that she's not here with me right now. I get that what I did might not have been the wisest thing to do, and that for some reason her attraction or whatever for me has changed. But we can't even talk about it. In the three years we've been together, not once have I been absent when she needed me. I can't even imagine being less attracted to someone after that event. You saved those girls from a dude that obviously would have harmed them if he was willing to beat you into a hospital stay. I'm sitting in a puddle just thinking about it. It's toxic masculinity to think you have to win every fight, and to abandon you in a time of need after she pushed you to do something? Christ, what a toddler. Just because she can't see what big dick energy this is, doesn't mean everyone else doesn't. If she lost attraction over you having balls of steel, she can F off. What you did is truly honorable, and your girlfriend should commend you for that and not feel unsafe around you. I'm sure if she were in the same situation as those girls, she would be silently hoping a guy would show up and confront the guy, wouldn't she? She should feel lucky to have you and know that you would risk getting your ass whooped to defend her. The fact you got hurt doesn't matter. Your intentions is the most important thing. If she leaves you, she leaves you. I'm sure you can find someone else who would be happy to have a great man like you. If my significant other had the guts to stand up to someone bigger than them to protect someone else, I'd feel safer with them than with anyone else. Update. My girlfriend has grown distant after I got beat up defending a group of girls being harassed. First of all, I want to say thank you to every single one of you who commented on my last post. The love and support I received was immense, and it actually made me feel a little better in the mess of it all. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. All of the following happened yesterday, so excuse me if I ramble a bit. It's all fresh in my mind. Until yesterday, it had been 14 days since my last contact with Sarah. My brother had left four days prior because I felt bad keeping him away from his family for so long. Plus, I could take care of myself to some extent. So around 2pm, while I was making lunch, I hear the doorbell ring. I go to open the door, and there she is. Sarah, with tears in her eyes, eye bags, frizzy hair, looking like a total mess. During the time we've been together, I've seen her in her ups and downs, but I'd never seen her in such a horrible state before. So, I let her in, she sits on the couch, and we still haven't said a word as we were both dumbfounded. I was so overwhelmed by emotions. I wanted to hug her, I wanted to full on blast her. I didn't even know what I wanted to do. So I did nothing and waited for her to talk. After five or 10 minutes of silence, she starts sobbing and saying she's sorry, and then full on crying. At this point, I can barely hold myself together. So I hold her hand and try to calm her down so I can figure out what's going on. After a while, she finally somewhat calms down and starts talking, and that's where it got bad. Something that I didn't include in the original post. 
because it wouldn't make sense to anyone, is that Sarah's mother has been divorced and remarried once. From what Sarah has told me, her biological father cheated on her mother while she was still a kid, and that's why they broke up. And that's also why she doesn't have any kind of relationship with her father. It seems odd when I first learned about it, but I didn't question it. That's not the whole story, though. Sarah's biological father didn't only cheat on her mother, he was a drug addict piece of crap that also used to beat her up frequently. Without getting into a lot of graphic detail, in one instance, when Sarah's brother tried to intervene and protect her mother, he ended up getting beat up too. So when she saw me intervening and getting my ass kicked in the bar incident, it triggered some kind of PTSD in her head that she could not control. That's why she had grown distant and eventually left. It all spiraled out of control and she could not handle it. In those two weeks we'd been apart, she'd barely eaten or slept, and even made some really dark thoughts, which I'd rather not go into. She told me she's a horrible girlfriend for leaving me alone in my condition, and that she doesn't expect us to be together again after that, which I told her isn't the case. So, we have a very long road ahead of us. My number one priority right now is getting her to see a therapist, which I suggested we can do together if she's scared to do alone. So yeah, that's where we are at. Some of you were right, that there was some deeper issue behind what happened, but I could not have possibly known. I also want to take this opportunity to say something that I got messaged about a lot. I got a lot of comments and messages saying that I was a moron for what I did at that parking lot, and saying that I should mind my own business next time, and not play the hero, etc. First of all, I did not initiate the fight with the dude. As I said, when I got there, I tried to pretend I was the boyfriend of one of the girls in case. When that didn't work, I got between the girls and the dude, trying to create some space between them, and that's when he started to push me and eventually started throwing punches. Secondly, no matter how hard I hit the gym, I would never be able to take that guy one-on-one. -on -one. As I said, I'm pretty fit, and I've been working out for several years, but the fella was a lot bigger than me. Unless I had a gun or something, which isn't legal in my country, I was doomed. Finally, for the people telling me to mind my own business, well, let me tell you what exactly I was doing. It is mine and everyone else's responsibility to look after the ones who can't protect themselves in this crappy world. No, I do not consider myself a hero, nor did I do it for the show. I did it because in some other instance, one of those girls could have been my girlfriend, sister, mother, needing help, and these girls were somebody else's girlfriend, sister, or mother. If I was in that situation a hundred more times, I would act the same. Edit. I also talked to her about the proposal I wanted to make this year. I was planning on doing it as a surprise, but in the way the things have turned out, I figured it would be better if she knows it first. We both agreed that it should be delayed for now. Thank you for the update and the additional information to add context. I wish you well in your relationship. As a girl, I want to thank you, OP, for standing up for the two girls. Not a lot of people would have done that, especially if they knew that they weren't as strong as the other person, and it takes a whole lot of courage. I'm glad they had someone to protect them, and we really need more people like you. Yes. I was attacked after ignoring catcalls on my way home from a late night class in university, and if it weren't for a couple of brave and selfless lads who heard me crying out, and threw themselves in to help me, and got a broken jaw and a nose respectively, I can't imagine how horribly my life would have changed that night. Some men are golden, and OP is one. I was attacked after ignoring catcalls on my way home from a late night class in university, this makes me frustrated and angry and scared. I hate that we have to consider some guy's feelings when we're being harassed, just in case he decides ignoring him is some affront to his fragile ego and decides to prove his masculinity by hurting someone. I'm so sorry that happened to you, and thank God for those guys who didn't mind their own business and got involved. Exactly why I carry pepper spray everywhere I go. There's good and bad people in this world, and if I'm in the wrong place at the wrong time, and some guy decides no means yes, I have some kind of defense. Especially if there's no guy like OP around. Don't listen to the people saying mind your own business, OP. You are the salt of the earth. 
Those girls will likely never forget what you did for them, and as a fellow female, I seriously thank you for looking out for them. You did well, dude. You did really well. Both in what you did standing in for those girls, and what you are doing now with your girlfriend. Not every argument can be won by using fists, and not every battle you fight, you are going to win. But doing the right thing is when you start actually winning for real, and even though you may think you lost a fight, you should understand and be happy with the fact that you won anyway. You stood up for what was right, and that's a win in my book. If everyone did as the naysayers claim and minded your own business, well, it just makes the world a darker place. Unless people like yourself stand up, even at risk of coming out the second best. Things just slowly turn to crap. You and I, and others here, know that this is not the world we wish to live in. So work through this with your girlfriend, do the therapy, and keep talking about things. You'll both get to a much better place and live a long and happy life, and never be afraid of doing what is right. Posted by user Throw RA Mixed Babies, titled My 29 Male, Girlfriends, 27 Female, Dad Discouraged Me From Proposing Because Their Family Isn't Thrilled About Us Having Dark Babies. Me and my girlfriend Naomi are an interracial couple, with her being Korean and me being black, We've dated for just under five years now, and for the past few months, I've been planning on proposing. I'm pretty traditional, so I thought it would be a good idea to ask Naomi's dad for his blessing before I proposed. I asked earlier this month, and when I arrived at their house, I was greeted by Naomi's mother and father, who invited me in. After a little talking, I told them that I was going to propose and wanted their blessing. Her mother was ecstatic, and her father didn't seem pleased, and he told me it was okay for me to propose. We talked more, and the topic of babies was brought up by her mother. I told her that I wanted to have kids with her, and she got even happier. We continued talking. When I told them I needed to start heading home, her mother said she would send me home with some food, and left for the kitchen. Me and her dad have a small language barrier between us, that usually is alleviated by either Naomi or her mother. So we kind of just sat there in silence. He then told me this. I'll clean it up, but it was difficult to understand, as he isn't great at English. You are a very nice young man, and we like you a lot. We'd be happy to have you in our family, but we are not too happy about you and her having dark babies. I was stunned, and kind of just awkwardly laughed. We sat there for another two minutes before her mum came out with a wrapped plate. When I got home, I said nothing about this to Naomi. I know I needed to talk to her about what was said, but I don't want to be the one that accuses her family of being racists. And I know this is probably irrational, but the way her father said it, put the thought in my head that Naomi might not want kids because of how dark I am. How do I approach her about this in the least accusatory way possible? She probably already knows. You can ask her if she knows how they feel about you, or if they've said anything about you two getting married and having kids. She likely wants you, but I suspect her parents' racism is not news. I guess she probably already has heard it before. This is the first time I've ever felt anything akin to racism from them before. Her dad showed his true face. He may have said we, but don't immediately assume that includes his wife. Definitely this. He's likely speaking for other people who don't share his opinion. You're probably right. That threw me off. It seemed like her mom wanted me to put a baby in her daughter. He also waited for her to leave, which is a good sign he knew that she wouldn't agree with it. Lots of old school Asians are really racist. It's a pretty known thing. Socially ingrained. Sounds like he still respects you, and he may not mean it maliciously, but in a way that says... Socially, we will be looked down on by other Asians. Yes, this. Doesn't make it right, but honestly, don't take it to heart. It's unfortunately a common belief among Asians that dark is ugly. He probably thought nothing of it when he said it, and I don't think the wife was on the same boat with him. You and your soon-to-be wife can break these ideologies. You may be taking this the wrong way. My grandmother is Japanese. Well, from a tropical island in Okinawa, which is claimed by Japan anyway. 
Her English wasn't that great, and my Japanese is very bad. My first fiance was Mexican. She tried to tell me something similar, and I didn't understand. My cousins, who speak better English, had to explain. I don't think it's so much that your in laws are racist, that they're afraid your children may not be fully accepted outside their immediate family. Asian cultures as a whole don't like outsiders and mixed race children, while treated great inside their immediate family may not be fully accepted within the Asian community as a whole. My grandma was trying to tell me to be prepared, and it's not even about individual races. Most Asian communities don't even like other Asians, and basically everyone hates Japanese people for being dicks during World War II. When I was in Korea, people told me all the time that I'd be so pretty if I lightened my skin. I'm half Asian, half white. They also told me I'd be so pretty if I would just dye my white hairs black, laser my freckles off, pluck my eyebrows, wear better fashion, the list goes on. A lot of the people making these comments were strangers. It's just a crazy image-oriented place. I had friends there with good jobs who told me they spent 60% of their income on clothes and makeup. A friend's mum casually offered to pay for freckle removal surgery for me while I was there. It sounds less like the dad is racist than he's anticipating social hardship for them and for the baby. And of course, the people trying to avoid social hardship by living up to the social standards perpetuate the hardship. If I were you, the conversation I'd have with Naomi would be about preparing both of you to navigate this aspect of Korean culture together, as a couple, and as parents. Your kids are in fact going to get some crap from their Korean relatives for being dark, and for being too fat, or too skinny, or not dressed well enough, or etc etc etc. If not from their grandparents, from the extended family, or just people they run into if they ever visit Korea. It might be pretty good-natured crap in a bunch of cases, but it'll still be crap, and it'll be good for you guys to have a game plan. Update. My girlfriend's father discouraged me from proposing because their family isn't thrilled about us having dark babies. Thank you for y'all's input. It really helped me, and most of y'all were right on the target. Yesterday afternoon, I sat my girlfriend Naomi down and had a conversation with her about what her dad said to me. I tried to leave out any mention of proposal, and told her I was in their neighborhood and decided to pop by. Terrible lie, I know, but she bought it. I told her what her dad said about us having dark babies, and asked if she had any similar feelings about our kids popping out half black. She looked at me like I was out of my mind. She told me she didn't give a frick about the color of her kids, as long as I was the dad, which was reassuring. She was not so happy with her dad, she wanted us to take a drive over there and talk with her parents about it. That evening, we dropped by unannounced, and when her mum opened the door to see us, she immediately asked Naomi to show her the ring. Naomi was confused, and I about crap myself. I, like an idiot, didn't call ahead to her parents that I hadn't proposed. I guess her mum thought we were going to surprise her with the engagement, and assumed I had already proposed. I was speechless. They began speaking in Korean, but from context, I assume her mum was asking if I was too cheap to buy her an engagement ring, and Naomi looked at me and started hugging and kissing me. My secret was out, and I told her I had already asked her parent for their blessing. She was a few seconds from crying, but sucked it up so we could speak to her dad. Like I said in my OG post, my future father-in-law isn't great at English, so he and Naomi spoke in Korean. According to Naomi, she asked him why he told me that, and he said he was worried about their extended family not viewing our babies as Korean, and being rude to them or me for being black. I guess this did not come across well in English, because he was just concerned for me and our kids. He didn't care that our babies would have dark skin, this was a huge relief. Her father isn't the racist, their extended families are, but like, screw them, who cares what they think? I am just so glad that our future kids are going to have grandparents that are going to love them. Only downside is now Naomi is expecting my proposal, so I really gotta knock her socks off. Thanks so much for all the help. Good news is, you're pretty much guaranteed to get a yes. Let us know how the proposal goes. Do you have any idea how you'll surprise her? Not yet, lol. My original plans got scrapped thanks to the pandemic, and now my second plan got shot down, now that she's expecting it. 
Hopefully plan three will be ironclad. Here is a different idea. My husband proposed early in the AM. We had already planned a day out. We just went to a pretty golf course to admire the flowers. Many have concession places where golfers can buy snacks and we got chocolate muffins. Then he proposed buy some flowers. Then we had the whole day together. I had the whole day to admire my ring and just be with him. We went for a lovely dinner. Can't remember what all we did, lol. I think we went for a walk on the seawall, you know, pretty places. But having the whole day to enjoy our engagement just together was fun. Don't take a long time planning. Just do it since the cat is essentially out of the bag. I agree with the whole having time to just be together and admire the ring. My now husband proposed in Philadelphia on our way walking to the museum. I'm an art nerd. He pulled me into a little park area and proposed by a fountain. I then spent all day staring at the ring instead of any of the art, but I was happy to just be able to be with him. It was a weekend getaway, so I didn't even update my social media or my parents or anyone until we got home. It was nice. Posted by user ThrowRA2ka, titled, My 29 male, wife, 27 female, has been working from home the past few months and has started having her high school ex over a lot. I told her this is unacceptable. Am I in the wrong for this? Hey everyone, I know that the title may sound confusing without the background that I am about to give. So, ever since COVID started, my wife has been working from home. My job never let us do that, so I have still been driving to work every day. She has a friend that she occasionally hangs out with. He's been invited to hang out with both of us before too. He's nice, fun to hang around, and pretty cool. I've had no problem with this. My wife made me aware pretty early on that she dated him in high school, and she said that they dated their freshman and sophomore year. They never had sex, but did mess around. They started reconnecting as friends during their senior year. At that time, he had a girlfriend, and she was starting to see another guy as well. She claims that after they broke up, there was never anything romantic between them. When COVID started, my wife said that she would be able to work from home. I was glad and happy for her, as I knew it would be easier and even save gas. She said that her friend was going to be able to work from home too, so they may meet up sometimes to go over their work and help each other. They both work in a similar field. One day, I came home and noticed that he was there. I thought nothing of it really, as my wife had told me about this. They both had their computers and looked like they were working pretty hard. For a while, it was like this. Suddenly, a few weeks in, I would come home and they would be casually hanging out and having fun. Sometimes they would be playing a game, sometimes they would be drinking, sometimes they would be eating. I started finding this a little bit weird. It seemed as though he was getting much more attention than me and that she was having a better time with him than me. Then one day when I came home, it was the final straw. They were both on the couch and her head was in his lap while they were watching TV. I waited until after he left and then had a talk with her. I was fuming. I yelled at her and told her that their actions have been unacceptable and that there's no reason that she should be laying with a friend like that. I expressed how I felt like she's been showing him more attention than her husband, and that it seemed like they were having more fun together than we do. Not to mention that they had dated before and fooled around. She got really upset and said that I had no right to tell her that she can no longer hang around someone. She was mad that I seemed to claim that she was cheating on me with him and swore that she was not and would not do that. She said that all they were doing was relaxing and that it was not wrong to lay her head on his lap. The last two days, he has not been at the house when I got home. She says that she's not seen him since our talk, I apologized for being so angry about it, and she doesn't seem like she's really accepted my apology, as she's been really quiet around me ever since. How do I make things better? Is she cheating? How do I handle things between her and this friend? I agree with you. When you said that they had computers out and were working hard, I felt it seemed innocent enough. However... A woman putting her head in some guy's lap? No, no, no. Boundaries are being crossed. It is not appropriate and she knows it. Would she be okay if the situation was reversed? Thank you. 
I don't like how everyone is automatically saying that it's wrong that the guy is over there in the first place. Sure, it's weird that they dated, but that was very many years ago. I had no problem when they were working, but what they did was taking it too far. You were wrong. She would never be okay with your ex coming over to work in your house. Also, social distancing means no one comes over. You were being blind. Sounds like you're making assumptions about the nature of their relationship. OP says they work in the same field. Why is it weird if he's there to collaborate about work? With COVID, you shouldn't be collaborating in person. There is no reason they couldn't call each other or do a video conference. Exactly. That kind of defeats the purpose of social distancing and working from home. Someone else reckons, set up a hidden SSID and at least one wireless camera and tape over slash disable the camera light. You are not going to like what you find. I would probably go with this option. Better safe than sorry. Yeah, spying on your spouse seems like a great option that a rational person who isn't a creepy control freak would do. Sarcasm. Can only hope the both of you grow out of this opinion. Yeah, the head on lap thing is inappropriate, but Jesus Christ, this is morally bankrupt. You do not record people in their own home without their consent. Your spouse is not your property. Don't get married if that's what you think marriage is about. You're a dumbass if you think you shouldn't act on your instincts and get proof of your wife cheating. Otherwise, in your divorce, you will be paying your alimony and retirement and everything you own because you didn't want to break trust when she broke the trust first. Do not listen to this guy. Someone else says, you are not at all in the wrong here. At first, it seemed innocent enough, but putting your head into the lap of someone you're not with is suspicious AF. She's right that you have no right to tell her to do something, but since you explained and asked her to stop, and she's being defensive like this, I'm getting a ton of red flags. If she's not cheating, she's sure not showing respect for you as her partner. It wouldn't surprise me if she is cheating, though, with how overly close they seem to be getting. Update. My wife has been working from home the past few months and has started having her high school ex over a lot. I told her this is unacceptable. So, last week I posted here about my wife spending time at our house with an old ex that she used to have from high school. He's been coming over and working from home with her ever since COVID started. At first, I thought nothing of it, as they were just simply helping each other with their work. Then they started hanging out and stuff more. When I caught her laying down with her head on his lap, I had enough. I told her he could no longer come over. She was mad and took offense to this, but agreed. Most people here agreed with me that it was sketchy for her to do this. I was made aware that he could still be coming over during the day and leaving before I get there. I ended up buying a camera that I could set up and hide while I'm at work. I put one in the living room and one in the bedroom. The first day they were set up, I saw nothing unusual. The second day was when it happened. The ex came over. At first, they were just working, but then he started to get pretty touchy with her. It progressed until they ended up going to our bedroom and sleeping together. I was shocked. I wasn't sure what to do. As soon as I saw my wife again, I questioned her if she'd been seeing him anymore. She denied it. I told her that I had cameras installed in the house. Her face changed completely then. She knew what I had seen. She immediately started crying. I told her to leave the house. She tried to apologize and explain, but I wasn't having any of it. Since then, we have talked to each other once. I told her that I don't see how anything can happen besides a divorce. She said she doesn't want that and asked if I could go to couples counseling one time before making that final decision. I reluctantly agreed. I don't expect it to work and I'm mainly doing it to humor her. I'm still looking and trying to contact divorce attorneys as I'm typing this. I'm really sorry this happened to you. I wish people could be honest and truthful the first time they're asked before evidence is released. Thank you. Me too. It seems like lying and delaying the truth just makes it harder on both people. Therapists' offices are a great place to break up. Built-in support, they see it all the time. I would recommend to skip the couple's counseling and just start your own individual therapy. Even if it hasn't fully hit you yet, this type of behavior is going to affect every relationship you have moving forward. It will help a lot to have someone to talk about all these things. 
both are really helpful coming from someone this happened to. The couple's therapy was incredibly validating, even though I went into it knowing I would only take divorce as an option. This. It sounds weird, but the goal of couples therapy isn't always to fix the relationship. Sometimes it's just to find closure. Figure out where things went wrong, and how those things can be avoided in future relationships, and how to interact with each other civilly, despite intense feelings. This is especially useful when there are kids involved. I wouldn't say it's necessary, but also not to write it off immediately. Someone else says, Don't let her fool you. Everything she's doing since being found out is an attempt to sweep this under the rug as fast as possible. Her desire to earn your trust back is simply a means to an end to her getting what she wants. Just like her cheating on you was about her getting what she wants, with complete disregard for you. If she really cared about how this affected you, she'd be giving you space. But she can't risk that because you might use it to realize this relationship is done. She doesn't want that, even if parting ways would be the healthiest option for you both. She just wants what she wants and she'll do anything she can to get it. It's not remorse, it's fear. What she's doing is flooding you with promises and apologies and emotional appeals in hopes that something will stick. Especially these blanket offers of, I'll do anything you need me to. As if it's your job to fix this. As if there must be some solution, and you're the unreasonable one if you can't come up with it. Opie, please read these sentences. Your reluctant acceptance of couples therapy suggests that just as she's successfully played you when she lied about having an affair, she is just trying to play you again. I agree with this comment. If you go to therapy with her, her plan is to go Davo on you, and by the end of the session, you will be apologizing to her for her cheating on you if she has her way. Fortunately, it sounds like you were pretty solid, but crazier things have happened on Reddit posts. Please update all of us if you're up for it after the session. She's not sorry she did it, only that she got caught. Her version of therapy is going to be gaslighting him into believing he drove her to do this, and it was somehow his fault. OP's priority should be to immediately freeze any account she has access to, and he should not say a word to her until after he consults with an attorney. Someone else says, First of all, get tested for STDs. Her friend might not be exclusive with your wife. Secondly, so sorry about the demise of your marriage. Because even if you go to counselling and decide not to divorce her, the marriage is over. It was over the first time she broke her vow to you to forsake all others. Now you know she's an unfaithful, deceitful liar that can look right into your face and demand apologies from you for having perfectly normal suspicions. How could you ever trust her again? Keep looking for that lawyer. Not sure if first of all get tested for STDs was intended to be interpreted literally, so for good measure, HIV cannot reliably be detected until three months after infection. From OP's post, it sounds as though this guy's been hanging around in the background for some time. There's no telling how long she's actually been cheating with him. OP has just very recently become aware of the infidelity, but it could have been going on for a while. Ooh. Posted by user ThrowRARococo, titled... My male 21, girlfriend, female 23, obsession with Pokemon is embarrassing me. So, my girlfriend loves Pokemon. Sometimes when we go out, she will ask me if it's alright if she checks for some Pokestops on Pokemon Go. When someone we know talks about Pokemon, my girlfriend gets really excited and wants to be friends on Pokemon Go right away. She also has many Pokemon plushies, all of them in our shared bedroom. At first it was cute, but my friends are starting to make fun of me for dating a child. My girlfriend is very mature and an amazing partner, but when I brought up how her obsession with Pokemon is embarrassing for her age, she felt insulted and told me her liking and playing Pokemon is no different than me playing League of Legends and Minecraft. Still, my buddies are making fun of us and I'm afraid she'll get hurt once she hears them. What do I do? How do I convince her she should maybe turn it down a little? My friends are visiting us, and I'm sure they will make fun of her once they see all of her plushies. Get some new friends. They're our mutual friends, so she would need to know they make fun of her. I don't want her to know really, because I know she will get hurt. 
They sound like crap friends for mocking her behind her back, and you sound like a pretty poor boyfriend for not sticking up for your girlfriend or respecting her interests. FYI, my girlfriend is 31 and she's a Pokemon nut. Thank you. Those are crap friends. WTF. I'm personally insulted by this. Me and my husband met playing Pokemon Go. We still play every single day. None of our friends would dare to insult our interest simply because we all understand what respective individuality is. You need to grow some balls and tell them to shut the hell up and stop taking the piss out of your girlfriend and her harmless hobby. And if they continue, you need to get better friends. For the record, my wife and I both love Pokemon and we're in our 30s. Hubby and I are 48 and 46 and we're playing. What else is there to do when your city and country is still on lockdown? Lie down. Try not to cry. Cry a lot. Oh my god, this is so sad. You should embrace her love for Pokemon since it brings her happiness. If your friends make fun of her, tell them they can leave. A lot of people enjoy things other people find childish, but they shouldn't have to change what they enjoy so other people think they are grown up. Let your girlfriend enjoy what she enjoys as much as she wants to enjoy it. If your friends don't like it, well, screw them. I would love to just tell them to freak off, but they're our mutual friends, so my girlfriend will eventually find out they're making fun of her. Not as hurt as she's going to be when she finds out her boyfriend was letting them talk crap about something she loves behind her back. It's time to sack up and be a man. Never let anyone, friend or not, make fun of your girlfriend behind her back. Not even be a man, just be a decent human. Update, my girlfriend's obsession with Pokemon is embarrassing me. I've decided to post this update because you were alright. I didn't have a girlfriend problem, I had a friend's problem. So I had a talk with my girlfriend like one of the users have suggested. I explained to her that I'm not ashamed of her hobby, I just didn't want her to know what our friends were saying behind her back. She said she doesn't care about their opinion, she's just doing what she's enjoying the most. I apologize to her. She has also agreed to move her Pokemon plushies so they wouldn't take up so much space. Fast forward to today. A few hours ago, our friends have visited us. It didn't take long for them to start making fun of my girlfriend. This time, I got mad. She organized her plushies so that they were all in our bedroom. She has not even once mentioned Pokemons, nor did she open the Pokemon Go app. Long story short, they were forced to leave. I've realized they don't have a problem with my girlfriend's hobby, they have a problem with my girlfriend, and I have enabled their behavior by not reacting sooner. I told them they're the ones who need to grow up and to visit us again once they stop being boomers. To show my girlfriend how sorry I am, and to better understand her hobby, I've downloaded the app myself. So, now I'm trying to level up as much as I can, because she has a mission when she needs to trade a Pokemon with a friend. But to do so, I need to be at least level 10. Thank you for all your comments, even the mean ones. They worked as a wake-up call, I guess. I'll be damned. An individual who was able to recognize their shortcomings and bounce back accordingly. You, sir, are a gentleman in the making. Yup, OP's a great guy, and more of us men should strive to be similar. Put your ego aside to recognize the mistakes you've made. Apologize and make amends. Compromise with your partner. This is one of the rare cases where the friends were actually a-holes. Usually I see the friends trying to warn someone about red flags and whatnot. Very well handled, bro. Your decision to play Pokemon with your girlfriend is the best you could make, and you're going to have lots of fun together. I started playing Minecraft with my boyfriend when we started liking each other, and it's even now, after three years, a good bonding activity and a common hobby. I'm actually playing Minecraft, and my girlfriend decided to play the games I usually play too. It really was the best decision. I feel like we're actually getting closer. Honestly, this whole post is so freaking adorable. I hope to find a girlfriend who makes me feel just as you do right now, one day. You're an awesome person. In my opinion, the true self is not based upon just the actions and how you deal with your day to day, but when hardship happens, what path you choose to take and how you take it. Take great pride in your ability to look at yourself and accepting what you were doing wrong and finding a path to better yourself and your relationship. It's more rare than you think. Also, never lose that ability. 
we will forever need to discover things within ourselves that we could do better in a moment of difficulty. Yes, and also his girlfriend didn't freak out or go overboard when he told her. She decided she wanted him to be more comfortable and moved her plushies, and that speaks volumes on her character. Yes, this part too. Both sides handled the situation perfect. Instead of one side or the other making a huge change, and things worked out great. Funny how things work. Posted by user throwra8934-0927. Titled, I had to kick my girlfriend out of my house because she was scaring my brother. I'd like to start by saying that English is not my first language, so if I make any mistakes, I would like to apologize beforehand. I'm going to use a throwaway account because I know that both my girlfriend and her parents use Reddit. Also, I'm sorry for the long post. So on to the situation. My girlfriend, 23 female, and I, 24 female, have been together for two years now. My family always loved her, and she even had a good relationship with my brother, 16 male, as well. Last year, my brother was diagnosed with a certain disease that almost took his life. My brother always has had a low immune system, which made everything even worse. My brother's still recovering, but in a much better condition right now, but unfortunately, he ended up losing his sight in both eyes. Legally speaking, he can be considered blind right now. When social isolation started to happen because of the most recent events, I decided to speak with my parents about how it would be better if my brother lived with me by the time being. My parents agreed happily. They both are essential workers, and they wouldn't have much time to stay with my brother. He is still getting used to his new life as a blind person, and is still adapting to how to live with it. If he needed help with anything, my parents wouldn't be able to help. And also because my brother already has a bad immune system, and it wouldn't be a good idea for him to live in a house with our parents who would constantly be dealing with patients who may or may not be sick. I can work from home, and I also have a lot of free time. So if he ever needed help, I would be more than available to help him. So it was a win-win situation. I also invited my girlfriend to live with me, she has a very good house of her own, but we could be together, so why not, right? Everything was good and fine, but recently, I noticed that my brother became to not be himself anymore. I mean, even with all of this happening with him, he was always cheerful and happy, and always trying to look at the good side in all of this. But recently, he started to become more shy and introverted when my girlfriend was around, and I found that strange. Yesterday, I was in my living room reading a book, and my brother was in the kitchen drinking a cup of water. My girlfriend just approached him and said just good morning. She just got up at 7.30am. I noticed my brother gets scared. I thought that was just an isolated incident. She must have caught him by surprise, so I didn't pay much attention to it. But today I was hearing music while preparing our lunch, and my brother was sitting on the kitchen talking with me. I noticed someone approaching, and I saw that it was my girlfriend. When she noticed we were hearing music, she started to walk slowly, as if she didn't want to make sound. She got behind my brother and quickly holds his shoulders and shouted, Hello there! How you doing? General Kenobi! My brother said he wanted to stay alone and went to his room. I was ticked at her. I asked her what did she thought she was doing by scaring him that way. She told me that she has read on the internet, and also from her mother, that scaring a blind person is a good thing because it makes them more aware of their surroundings. I started to connect the dots and asked her for how long she's been scaring my brother like that. She told me around two weeks, up to three times a day if possible in her words. I was seeing red at that moment. I asked her to never do that again. It didn't take much. It was almost 4pm today, and I was watering my garden when I heard my brother shout. When I got back inside, he was shouting to my girlfriend to leave him alone. I ended up getting in a fight with her, and I tried every single thing that I could to show her that it wasn't okay to do that to a blind person, and that she needed to stop, or else she would have to come back to her house. She promised me to never do it again. Tonight, I was making dinner, and she did again. I didn't know what to do anymore. We got into a huge fight, and I ended up telling her to go back to her house. She argued with me that I was being unfair, and that she's just trying to help. I still refused to let her stay, and she just went to her home. 
She's been bombarding my cell phone the entire night about it, that it was wrong for me to do that, and I should never have kicked her out over something so trivial as that. I haven't been answering, and I don't even know how to. I feel like I shouldn't have just kicked her out of my house, but I don't feel like it would have been a safe space for my brother if she just goes around scaring him. My brother told me he didn't say anything to me before because he didn't want to cause problems as he was a guest. I don't think she would stop if she came back. She has a history of being a little bit stubborn sometimes, but never something like this that would affect other people. I don't know how to respond to her. Should I let her back to my house, but setting some ground rules? Should I not allow her back until my brothers are back to my parents' house? Other than this, she was always a loving girlfriend, and always treated me and my family with nothing but respect and love. I don't know how to go on from this. Do you honestly want to be with someone who thinks it's okay to emotionally traumatize a blind person? Especially someone who was recently blind and already dealing with more than enough emotional trauma from that. Your girlfriend is cruel, knowingly, deliberately, maliciously cruel. At the very least, never have her around your brother again, or he'll stop trusting you like he no longer trusts her. Not only that, when her partner came to her with concerns and asked her to stop, she ignored him, because she knew better. This is what abusers do. Dude, her brother even told her to stop before that. She's an amazing big sister. OP rocks for having her bros back. Both you and your brother have clearly let her know what she's doing is not okay. She makes you feel bad for even asking her to stop. Lies and says she won't do it again. Then scares him the same day. This is clearly having a big effect on your brother's life. He's vulnerable and is already having a hard time, and now he feels like he needs to fight off someone who is bigger, older, and abled. She is being borderline abusive. My advice... Break off any connection with her and keep protecting your brother from any harm. Your brother is already hurting inside. He's in pain from newly becoming blind. It's a very hard pill to swallow. It's not something you get over within a year or two. He likely needs therapy. And like you said before, he's just getting used to not seeing and is having trouble adjusting to your place. That's the very last thing he needs on his plate. She was deliberately cruel to him and crossed his personal boundaries. Your brother, not just you, made it perfectly clear to her that he didn't like her scaring him, but she ignored his pleas. If you want to permanently risk your relationship with your brother and or his mental well-being, go back to her. Otherwise, tell her to kick rocks because that was straight up abusive. What would happen if you had a disabled child with her? She can't even respect your little brother as a human being. Update, I had to kick my girlfriend out of my house because she was scaring my brother. Hello everyone, I would like to thank you all for your time, and of course for commenting on my original post, and would like to thank you all for your advice. I would like to start by saying that I decided to get in contact again with my girlfriend, and I decided to talk to her. Of course, I didn't let her back into my home, and I didn't want to talk on any other place than here. She called me to go to her house. I started by asking her where did she get the advice that she saw on the internet that said scaring blind people was a good thing to be done. She was very reluctant to tell me, but when I pressured her a little bit more, she ended up telling me. Apparently there is no article, no research, no elaborate study, nothing. The advice she got came from her friends on Facebook chat, and she just went along with it. She also told me she lied about her mother telling her that. To clarify, her mother is a social worker where we live, so she thought that if she said that her mother had also said it, that would make her friend's advice a little more credible, because she couldn't find any article or study. I tried to ask her about why she would think that her friend's advice was good when she could do nothing to corroborate it. She didn't want to answer. I asked her then why she would ignore me when I told her to stop and keep scaring my brother. She told me that she didn't think I would find it that bad, and that if I really loved her, I would just ignore it because she was trying to help, and that she feels that I don't love her because I would choose my brother over her just because now he's crippled, her own words, on something so trivial, and that he should grow up and deal with his problems himself, and I as her girlfriend should be on her side always. Of course, I was very angry at this answer, 
and we ended up getting into another fight. In her words, I shouldn't have asked my brother to come live with me, but as I ended up asking, he should just be quiet and obey and accept what we do because we know better for being adults. Before going to her house, I took some people's advice and I decided to ponder about our relationship until that moment. And looking back, I could see a lot of things I believe I didn't want to see. First, every single approach on our relationship was taken by me. One to date, I was the one inviting her. Let's go see a movie. I always had to be the one to invite her. Romantic time, I had to start always. Looking back, the entire relationship looks one-sided. Second, she doesn't look like she cares much about boundaries from the start. She disregarded every single boundary I've had before. I never took much action about them because they were small things. I believe that if I had made myself more clear before, it wouldn't get to a point where it would cause problems to my brother. I made a decision. I didn't want to break up, but if we were to continue a relationship with her, all of this would have to change. I talked with her and told her that I didn't want to break up, but if we were to continue a relationship, first she would not be allowed near my brother and wouldn't be welcome to my house when my brother is there. Second, she would have to apologize to him and promise that this time she would respect that promise, that what was done wouldn't happen again, and third, she would have to go to counseling with me. Those were my terms, and if we were to continue together, things had to change. She got mad at me, cursed at me, told me I was an idiot to choose family over her, and that I was crazy to end a relationship over this. I talked with her about those things that I mentioned earlier, and she called me stupid, that this is what a good relationship looks like. Of course, we got into another fight. In the end, she wasn't willing to compromise and make the relationship work, so I decided to end things. Yep, we broke up. Of course, I left her house being called a lot of names. I blocked her on my cell phone and social media, and right now I'm focusing on my brother. It hurts a lot that the person that I've been calling the love of my life recently could be that cold, but I guess it was for the better. A lot of you recommended therapy and counseling for my brother. He is already on it. Before coming to my house, he was already on it. I would like to thank you all for your advice. I don't think I would have ever looked back at my own relationship if it hadn't got to that point, and I don't think it would be safer to continue in that relationship anymore. She already disregarded boundaries with me, I didn't do anything about it, and it got to a point where it ended up affecting my brother very badly, and I feel very guilty for that. Thank you all for your help, and for your kind words of comfort. Edit, it looks like a lot of people are misreading or didn't see my original post. I am also a woman, and my girlfriend is a woman as well. Wow, I'm so sorry. She is delusional, or perhaps simply self-centered and selfish, if she thinks a good relationship is just one where she gets everything she wants and gets to do whatever she wants, no matter how it impacts others. So, you are absolutely better off without her. Be thankful that you've learned that now and not later. OP, your ex is a horrible person. As time goes by and you continue to reflect on her behavior, the hurt will fade and be replaced by both anger and this realization. You did the right thing. Now, give yourself time to heal and let this sink in. It takes time for your brain to make the emotional transition between love of my life, who I rationalize everything for, so I can see as a good person, to horrible girl that tortured my disabled brother and took advantage of me. At first, you'll be sad and miss her. Don't give in and don't contact her ever again. There's nothing to be gained from it, and she doesn't deserve a second more of your time, let alone a chance to weasel her way back into your life. Once you heal and time has passed, you are going to be so glad you made this choice. I don't care if she looks like a supermodel. This girl is so ugly inside that she was literally ruining your brother's life and yours. Be proud of yourself for doing the right thing. Stay strong and continue to protect yourself and your family. I'm rooting for you. Posted by user, Throw RA Excelled by Fam. Titled, I, 36 male, have refused to go to the future wedding of my now ex-wife, 37 female, 
and it's really affecting the relationship with our kids. Thought I'd give this a chance to see if I can get some insight into my situation, as I can't see what I've done that's so wrong, and what I can do to remedy it. So, we've been married 15 years, together longer, and have three kids. She's a daughter from her first relationship who's now 18, I class her as mine as I've done everything for her, and we have a 16-year-old and 13-year-old sons. Now, she was upfront and honest when we got together that she was bi, and it was never an issue last year until she said she thought that she was ultimately a lesbian and had fallen in love with her now fiancé, 35 female. And it led to a divorce, as I was unwilling to open the relationship or consider a poly situation. So, we've been divorced a year, although we're still good friends and have a good co-parenting relationship. Even though we're good, I still am suffering and can't say I'm even close to moving on yet. The kids live with her primarily, although I see them multiple times a week and can say if I didn't have them, I'd have nothing. So basically, I got a call from my ex earlier on in the week saying that she had to tell me something, that she's now engaged. I was shocked as hell. Basically, she said they're not going to do the typical thing and have a long engagement. They're looking at getting married as soon as lockdown has been lifted, and they're on about moving in together as soon as possible. But wait, there's more. She said she wants to have me as her best man, as she still considers me her best friend, and can't think of anyone else she'd rather have there. Suffice to say, I told her that I wasn't happy with it, and said I'm not going to be her best man, or don't think it's a good idea for me to be at the wedding. And definitely don't like the idea of moving someone in around my kids after a year. Now, my kids love the fiancé. My kids are always talking about her. Suffice to say, she was upset and we haven't spoken since. I mean, if that was just it, then I wouldn't be that upset. I mean, in what way does going to a wedding, seeing my wife marry the woman who she left me for, seem like a good idea? And to be the best man? My kids found out, though somehow, and are really upset. My daughter particularly really went off, and she thought that I was better than that, and if I don't go to the wedding, she'll never talk to me again. The youngest two don't want to come and see me this week, and have also refused to talk to me. I'm still close and have a relationship with my in-laws, and they've also been on my case saying I should go, especially for my kids' sake. Here is where I need help, and someone to talk to. What do I do? I mean, the last thing I want to do is be false and go to a wedding, watching the woman who I thought I'd be with forever marry someone else. Yet, I hate the thought that my kids are suffering, and the prospect of not having them in my life, even if it's for a short while, is like torture. Help. I get it. It took me seven years to get over the hurt of my ex cheating, before I felt able to pursue another LTR. So... Why she or anyone thinks you should be dealing with it like a man after a year is insane in my opinion, especially after a 15-year relationship. Your kids are old enough for you to tell them the truth about how you're feeling and how you're unable to deal with her request this soon after the divorce. If they can't accept your decision, then maybe use analogies they can understand about their own lives. Ultimately, stick by your guns. Your mental health is more important, and it sounds like you need to focus on your healing right now. Absolutely. I mean, I do not feel in any way, shape, or form ready to start dating or get into a relationship yet. However, she's been trying to push me to date, even trying to set me up with a suitable woman that she knows. She feels guilty and thinks I would be a great catch for someone and deserves someone who appreciates me. Which is all dandy, but I just don't want it yet. I am trying to get through to our oldest so I can talk about it to her. She's 18, and the one they all look up to. And if I can at least get her to understand, then it might help the other two come around. I'm sure it would all be very hip and reasonable and mature to do this in her eyes. But man, this would be so very, very raw for me. Your children really need to hear that you get to have a point of view as well. They don't get to dictate this to you. If your daughter pushes this to a point where she feels like she won't speak to you again, realize you can't control that. You can only control what you say or you do in response. 
I would say something to the effect of, I'm very sorry you couldn't see my point of view or don't respect it, which certainly is the impression I get when I hear this from you. Please realize that I am in the process of healing from this relationship's breakup, and my emotions don't turn on and off like a light switch. I will heal in my own time. Right now, I don't particularly feel like walking the one-time love of my life down an aisle to marry someone else. I am not ready for that so soon. I may never be. If this is something you can't accept or won't accept, I understand. I wish you a long and happy life, a partner that never leaves you, and know that I love you and will always be here to talk if you feel like bridging that barrier someday. Damn. You managed to put what he should say into words perfectly. I can't believe your ex and kids can't understand why this is hard for you. This isn't an episode of Friends, you are not Ross, and you can't just get over this kind of pain and show up smiling at her wedding like you're in a half-hour TV episode. I'm so sorry. You might need to talk to a counsellor to work through this kind of hurt. A counsellor may be able to explain things to your kids too. There is no timetable for healing. It's different for everyone. Best of luck to you, my friend. I know it isn't going to happen immediately, but I truly hope you find your happiness with someone amazing eventually, when you're ready. I also disagree with the others. Would you tell him to go if his ex-wife asked him to be her best man if she was going to marry another guy? No? Then what's the difference? Opie has no obligation to be part of his ex marrying someone else. Wow. It's hilarious how much worse that sounds, when it really isn't any. Yeah, because the stereotype that lesbian relationships are not to be taken serious or a no threat to men is still very much alive. But I agree, this is some nonsense. Opie's kids need to learn some compassion for others and how to protect your mental health. Update. I have refused to go to the future wedding of my now ex-wife, and it's really affecting the relationship with our kids. Basically, everything all moved forward today. So I basically thought I'd be best to reach out to my daughter, so I messaged her along the lines of, Hey, I know you're not talking to me now, but I think we really need to talk. To my surprise, she agreed and came over very quickly. Basically, I said to her that as she's an adult, I won't sugarcoat things now. I'm really not in a good place, and her mum getting married to her girlfriend and asking me to be best man is a bit too much for me when I'm struggling to move on with my life. She said that she sort of understands, but it hit her close to home. She then came out to me as a lesbian herself. She said she's known for a while now. She told her mum and my ex a while ago, but wasn't sure how to tell me. And because of the way I reacted to the wedding, she was worried I wouldn't be able to accept it. I reassured her that I love her dearly, and I'm proud of her for being honest with me, and stressed the way I feel about her mum and her now fiancé is nothing to do with the fact that they're lesbians, but because she's my ex-wife, and I can't just turn my feelings off like that. I'd feel exactly the same if her mum was marrying a dude. We hugged it out, and she said she'd talk to her brother and see if she can get them to come around, because they live with mum and they see the fiancé often. They see her and love her a lot, so they don't understand. I said to her I can't promise I would go to the wedding eventually, but if I feel up to it, I may try, but it will be hard for me. While she was there, she FaceTimed her mum from her phone, and I got a chance to talk to my ex. I basically was honest, said I feel like she blindsided me and sprung it on me without thinking about how I feel, especially putting me on the spot about making me her best man. I said the invitation to the wedding was one thing, but that was a bit too much for me. She took it all in and apologized, and admitted it's because she's all loved up and her family are giving her all the platitudes about how happy and proud they are, so she got caught up in the moment. She asked me how I feel about it now. I said in all honesty, it's a bit too much to consider at the moment, but I definitely am not going to be her best man regardless. She understands and said that she won't expect that of me, but if I didn't want to go to the wedding itself, would I be interested in just going to the reception? I said, in all honesty, I don't know if I can, and she shouldn't expect me to. She agreed and said she'll leave it to me and will try to understand if I can, but would be made up if I can. 
The boys were there, so I asked if she could put them on, but they didn't want to talk to me. Honestly, that feels like a punch in the balls, so I left it there before it started me crying and she saw it, and I let my daughter leave so I could be on my own. I've never liked her to see me too emotional, especially crying. So there you have it. We've all made peace as such, but there's a long way to go yet. Edit, a lot of people have said about her cheating. Whilst she did meet her now fiancé before we split, I don't believe there was physical intimacy. Possibly an emotional thing, but I don't believe they got together until we split. Edit 2, a lot of people have picked up on me not showing emotion around my kids. I do show emotion around them. I'm loving, funny, affectionate, humble, etc. And I do show sadness at things like funerals, but I generally don't like them to see me cry, especially at things like this. Posted by user Throw RA Confused Mo. Titled My best friend wants me to work with my abuser on her wedding. I have a best friend, we'll call her Tina, who I've known most of my life. We have had a strong friendship from middle school all the way until we graduated from the same college. We have always been there for each other, and I tell her pretty much everything. Back in junior year of high school, we'll call him Rod, took advantage of me at a house party. He never apologized for it, and it put me in a deep downward spiral to the point where I almost wanted to drop out in order to never see his face again. I told Tina about it, and she did everything she could to support me. Fast forward to early 2020. Tina and her boyfriend, Josh, announced that they were getting engaged, and Tina wanted to be the maid of honor. I was beyond excited to do it. We've always talked about being each other's maids of honor. There was another detail, though. Josh had a similar friendship history with his best man, and they thought it would be adorable if the maid of honor and best man worked together on everything, and were their own second package on the wedding day. I guess it was their way of making us feel a little more excited for weddings of our own. I found out that the best man was going to be Rod, and that he and Josh remained best friends after high school. I thought Rod was just in the friend group, but it turns out they were just as close as could be. My heart sunk, and I simply didn't know how to respond. They expected us to work together and be together the whole wedding process, and that sounded like literal hell. I started thinking about whether Tina never told Josh, or that Josh heard and just didn't care. All I know is that I was having second thoughts about the wedding after that. I texted Tina about my concerns with Rod coming in the most polite way possible, and she sent me this in reply. I know about what happened with you guys back in the day, but Rod seems to be a great guy now. It would just really mean a lot if you can push that memory away for the duration of this. Please just trust me. I don't know how to respond to this, and luckily the wedding planning process has been at a halt since COVID. I haven't responded to her since that text, but now this has been really bugging me. Should I just say no? It would probably break her heart, but I just don't know if I can handle working with my abuser. Help? Say no. If she wants you to do this, she is not your friend, period. If my fiancé was friends with someone who took advantage of my friend, I would be making an ultimatum that the friendship with the abuser ends. Good lord, no. Do not feel bad about this. I am angry on your behalf. This. I don't knowingly associate with those types, and I sure as hell wouldn't marry someone who knowingly does as well let alone my best friend's abuser. What the actual hell kind of people are these? It seems to me these are the people who pretend to support you, but don't actually think what happened is what it is, and it just happens at parties, and that the guy thought it was consensual. That's the kind of people they seem like to me. Gross. Someone else says, I'm truly happy for you that you were getting married to the man you love, and was incredibly honored to be your M.I.H., I really did want to share your happiness with you, but working alongside the man who took advantage of me as a child, one who hasn't even showed a shred of remorse for his actions to me, his victim, is impossible. It is not just a bad memory, it's a trauma. I would have forgotten it if I could. It's not something I choose to live with, I would have loved to make your day as special as I could, but I have to protect myself. I am not working alongside an abuser, especially my own abuser. 
and I'm disappointed that you would even ask this of me. As if it was something so simple. I am disgusted that you would even go so far as to tell me he's a great guy after what he did to me. What I now have to live with for the rest of my life, and that you would choose to prioritize my abuser over me. I cannot be happy for you on the day of your wedding if I am spending the entire time reliving my experience, and I cannot celebrate a friend who would put me in harm's way and ask for me to sacrifice all progress I've made over the years for the sake of an unnecessary second package wedding bonus. I hope you have a wonderful wedding and life with Josh. I will no longer be able to attend and am cutting my ties here. OP, here's a suggested response if you would like to use any of it. Sometimes wording can be hard, and people are suggesting some fantastic alternative responses and mindsets to use if you wish. She does not get to expect this of you. She is minimizing your incident for her own sake, but I understand if you don't want to send her a barrage of angry responses in the politest way I can muster at the moment. Hope you are doing well, and have other friends that you can rely on for genuine support. 100% you should say no. Her opinion of, he seems like a great guy now, and just trust me, is so unbelievably inconsiderate and neglects the impact of what Rod has done to you. No friend should ever put you in a position like this, and it's well within reason to politely say no and hold your ground. Right? What the frick kind of friend is this? Tell her what if she got taken advantage of told her boyfriend, and the boyfriend was like, oh, but I know him, he's actually a great guy. Would she not feel like utter crap? What is wrong with people like her, that literally think the world revolves around them, and as soon as it doesn't, they just dismiss anything getting in the way of it doing so, so that it can go back to revolving around them again? She is a sociopath. OP, I know you want to be considerate towards your friends and say things as lightly and non-confrontationally as possible, but it's time to love yourself now. Stay firm on what you believe. Respect yourself here. Screw confrontation and screw upsetting her and her stupid wedding. You've been subjected to a lifelong trauma, so screw her wedding for three seconds. I tried to be diplomatic in my last message so as not to hurt your feelings, but I'm going to put this as firmly and bluntly as possible so there is zero misunderstanding. I will not be working in close proximity with my former abuser. It makes no difference to me how nice he is these days. I'm glad he is no longer subjecting women to disgusting acts, but I am unfortunately not one of those women. I am sad that a horrific event that changed my life is being minimized, but it can't be helped, as you haven't experienced this yourself, so I understand how the horror of it can be hard to fully grasp. I really do wish you the happiest day, and I would give everything to be there. However, I will 100% not be present near that man, and that is non-negotiable. It really, really, really needs to be non-negotiable, and you need to state that your feelings on this are final, they are not to be minimized or put down or cast away for the sake of a wedding, and if they choose not to work with you to ensure their friend, and the selfish woman's best friend, is happy, then that is on them. If their wedding falls apart due to the need to reorganize crap and get a new maid of honor, it would be because they tried to trample all over your boundaries instead of hearing you out and adjusting as necessary to a specific and sensitive situation. In other words, that is on them. Remember that. Update. My best friend wants me to work with my abuser on her wedding. First of all, Thank you all so much for the support on my post. I did not expect it to gain that much attention. I guess a lot happened since then. I don't know if it's even been a week yet, but this is going to change my life, perhaps for the better. There were hundreds of comments, and I thought I'd address a few questions regarding the incident itself. I don't appreciate how some of these were asked, but I'll share anyway for the sake of clarifying things. One, was I under the influence? Yes but I remember vividly saying no. I was drunk enough to have all my strength and mobility wonky, but I didn't black out or anything. The force he used on me didn't seem that of someone who was drunk. He looked completely sober, but I could be wrong. I remember a couple of times when I was trying to lift myself off the bed and he would push me back down. I remember the expression on his face, and like you guys said, I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy. That's all I'm willing to share for now. The only person who knows all the details is Tina. 
Is it bad that I wish she knew nothing? Maybe it would hurt less. Two, why didn't I report it? Because I saw how that turned out for the other girls I knew. I've had a few other friends, not Tina, who have had the same thing happen to them and nothing came of reporting it, and it made them feel worse. Just the few comments calling me a liar stung, so I can't imagine how I would have felt back as my unstable teen self. Not only that, I was scared of what Rod would do if he found out I had reported him. There was just something about him that made me never want to cross him. Reading all your comments, it seems pretty clear that how Tina was treating me was extremely inconsiderate, and I should find a new friend. Although it was a huge slap in the face, I came to my senses and believed that I couldn't be around someone who would do that to me. Some of you said to expose them during vows, but that's just not the kind of person I am, and it might not turn out well. A few of you gave me example texts I could send, which I'm extremely thankful for, but I decided to send this. I've had time to think about it, and I just can't be your maid of honor anymore. It's so hurtful that you're telling me to pack up my trauma for who knows how long until your wedding day. I just can't do it. I don't think I will come at all, knowing that he's going to be there. I'm sorry. It's pretty weak, but it's probably the meanest text I've ever sent. An hour later, I get a call from Josh. He asked me what was going on with me and Tina, and that she was extremely upset. A part of me snapped and I said, I don't know, what's going on with you making someone who took advantage of me the best man? I don't usually blurt things out like that. He was confused and I repeated myself. He was silent for a few seconds and then asked if he could come over. I was a little wary of the idea, but I said, sure. I know we should be social distancing, but this really needed to be discussed. He comes to my apartment 40 minutes later without Tina. I have never hung out with Josh one-on-one -on -one before. It was always with Tina. Josh always had a really cute and sweet personality, and I've always approved of him when it came to dating her. He was really only a friendly acquaintance to me, though. We sat down and spoke for over an hour. Tina had told Josh that the reason I wasn't coming to the wedding was that I didn't want to work with Rod because I had a crush on him, and thought she was forcing the relationship too much. So basically, she said we had a petty girl fight. My jaw hit the floor and I was fuming. She obviously never told Josh what Ron did to me. I shared that Ron had taken advantage of me back in high school and that Tina knew about it. I asked if he knew too. He said he didn't, but he did say that a few crazy bitches falsely accused him of it in senior year. This obviously didn't include me, since I only told Tina and a few family members. Josh believed him at the time, but I guess after hearing me say it, it's starting to dawn on him that it's his friend was a liar. Here's something that I didn't expect. Josh shared with me that he was taken advantage of when he was a kid by an older brother of a friend he had. He said that if he was forced to work with said brother on a wedding, he would absolutely refuse. He apologized heavily on behalf of Tina, but I won't forgive unless she says it herself. I know some of you may think Josh is lying, but I believe him. I could see it by Josh's face and body language that the realization really weighed down on him, and I felt bad. In a way, we were both going through a betrayal. I asked if he was okay to go home, and he said yes. He thanked me for telling him and left. I don't know if I'll stay in touch with him, but I was beyond furious with Tina at this point. I was expecting an angry text coming from her, and sure enough, I got it at like midnight. She went off, saying that I'm going to end up destroying their marriage. How could I do that to her, etc, etc. I just pressed the block button and went to bed. Quickest decision I've ever made. I'm feeling a little down in the dumps right now, yet slightly relieved. I'm going to try to connect with other friends and try to move on from this. If I'm feeling brave enough, I might try to find these crazy bitches and see if we can make a case against Rod. Knowing that there are other victims makes me feel so guilty that I want to scream. Sorry it's not too happy of an ending, but I think it might have been more unhappy if I decided to go along with it. Thank you, Reddit. I'm livid for you. OP, screw that noise. Tina showed her true colors and never told Josh the truth. Josh sounds like a decent guy. You should stay in touch with him. 
especially since it sounds like in The Reckoning with Josh and Tina, he's going to have to clean house, ending toxic friendships. There may be pressure on him to rug sweep, so hearing a voice of reason like yours may be a help. Tina doesn't deserve him, nor does she deserve your friendship. She's a liar and betrayer. She chose to protect an abuser. All to not make waves. It wasn't like her fiancé was pressuring her to include Rod, knowing everything. She made the executive decision to hide it and lie about why you backed out of the wedding. Terrible. Maybe this is a bit hasty, since info on their relationship is limited, but I hope Josh just breaks up with her. He seems like a very emotionally mature person. He deserves better. I found out that my fiancé had known my best friend was an abuser for years and never said anything. I'd end that relationship. Imagine having to look back on years' worth of conversations and memories and realise that the guy you were hanging out with was an abuser. Potentially a serial abuser too. Josh now has to deal with that. Plus, probably has some major anxiety over every encounter Rod ever had with a woman in the time they've known each other. Also, seeing as Rod is so close to Josh, was Tina seriously fine hanging out with Rod this whole fudging time? Just chilling with her best friend's abuser? What a psycho! This is a somewhat wonderful update. While disappointed to see your friend Tina failing at being a friend, it brings me pleasure to see Josh is a great human being, and you are no longer working with that scumbag named Rod. You just saved yourself a lot of headache and emotional pain, and probably saved Josh from a horrible person. Win-win, really. Posted by user ThrowRAPO, titled, I, 38 male, just found out that my brother, 19 male, has been perving on my wife. Throw away, because I'm still the only one that knows. Background. My brother has been staying with us since lockdown, after his university closed. He couldn't stay with our parents, because they just sold the house and moved to a one-bedroom apartment, and our sister lives in a different part of the country. He was the, oops, baby, relatable, so I hope that explains the age gap. My wife and I have a five-bedroom home, but currently don't have children yet. We decided to adopt two kids in our 40s, so we let him stay here. My brother has always been different. He's a bit of a loner and doesn't have a lot of friends outside of his online group. He's a shy, geeky kid, but he's otherwise all right, or so I thought, when you get to know him. So here is what happens. The Wi-Fi doesn't quite reach my brother's room, so he usually does his schoolwork and other stuff in the dining room. A few nights ago, I was walking to the fridge after waking up in the middle of the night. Wife and I sleep early, and I saw my brother working on something out. And as I got closer, I saw a very compromising picture of my wife. Cleavage shot as she was gardening. He noticed me, and quickly closed the window like he was watching porn. I was too shell-shocked to say anything at the time, and he just smiled awkwardly and ran to his room with a laptop. When I realized that something was up, I knew I had to find out. The next day, I asked my brother to pick up some groceries and some lunch for us while he was away. I went to his room, something I've never done since he moved, and well, it wasn't pretty. I saw a couple of my wife's bras and some of her panties, which I can only assume he used to pleasure himself. I took his laptop and, screw it, decided to snoop. I knew his password because I borrowed his Crunchyroll account to watch this anime my friend recommended. I don't usually watch anime. There, I saw some of the most sickening entries I've read. There were pictures of my wife in a towel, her working out, her in compromising positions, etc. All taken without her consent by the looks of it. This guy even logs every time he touches himself to the image of my wife. The creepiest part? He sometimes listens in on us when we have sex. My wife can be a bit loud, but we didn't think it would be a problem since his bedroom was in a different part of the house, the guest bedroom. I left the room feeling like I needed a shower. It was absolutely disgusting. Now I don't know what to do. I find myself fighting the urge to pummel him into the next week every time that I see him. I haven't even told my wife yet, because I'm 100% sure she would feel violated and disgusted. So I want to find the best solution first, before doing so. I so desperately want to kick him out, but he has nowhere else to go. 
Even if I do, what should I tell my parents? The truth? This will most likely break the family apart. I do plan on telling my wife soon, but if I do, I can almost guarantee she would want nothing to do with him and would never want to visit the family if he was around. I'm so fudging lost right now. Any advice will help. Still fighting the urge to beat my brother to a bloody pulp. Edit, if you're wondering, I did take pictures as proof. Small update, I told my wife. The Redditors who said I should tell her first before anything because she was the victim here were absolutely right. I'm giving her all the power to decide what to do about it. A lot has happened, but there are still things that need to be settled. Too long to add here and too incomplete to make a new update post, hopefully we'll have everything settled tomorrow or the day after. I'll write the update once everything is settled and I calm down. No. I'm not going to beat up my brother, but I have thought about it. And to the people asking for the pics, you're disgusting, and I hope the women in your life are proud of you. That's my wife. Please have some respect. Swans Big says, The only reason you busted him that night was because he was working in the part of the house with Wi-Fi. No way would he risk having that laptop out of his bedroom unless he needed the internet. I hope it's not true, but those pics are now likely in places other than just the laptop. I was thinking about that too. If it was just pictures, why did he need the internet to look at them? If it's real, he's posting them somewhere. Guaranteed he has an online backup. I would guess in his Google Drive. Hopefully, just because he's got them saved in the cloud. There must be some kind of online diary too. He's 19. He's an adult, and he knows damn well what he did and that it's wrong. Make a copy of everything, record it with your phone, have proof of everything. Whether you want to confront him or go straight to the police is up to you, but I'd definitely be kicking him to the curb that instant. Also, his parents definitely need to know so he doesn't try blaming you or lying about it. Show them everything. He has nowhere else to go. That's his problem, OP. He shouldn't have done all of that if he wanted to live easy during all this. Time to face consequences for his actions. Prioritize your wife's safety and comfort in her own home. My nephew got himself into a similar situation. This is definitely one of those issues that divides a family, and you're just going to have to accept that. You have a responsibility to your wife here. She will feel even more violated if she found out you were covering for him, no matter the reason. She needs to know ASAP, and your brother needs to be kicked out immediately. Keep the laptop and all the evidence you've found. Your wife may decide to press charges against him, and you will need proof to back it up. Take videos of your wife's things in his room, and the log he's created on his laptop. Tell your parents the reason he has been kicked out, but share only the details your wife feels comfortable with them knowing. Here to stress, it is a thing your brother did to divide the family. OP's family would do well to note, he and his wife are blameless for facing or exposing it. Update, I just found out that my brother has been perving on my wife. This update was long overdue, so I apologise to everyone who waited for this. I've had daily messages asking me about what happened, and now that I'm in a better place to actually talk about it, I can tell everyone about what happened. First of all, thank you to the Redditors who pointed out that I should tell my wife first before confronting my brother. You were right, she did appreciate the fact that I gave her control over the situation. I told my wife the next day after posting, and needless to say, she did not take it well. She says she feels violated and unsafe in her own home. See, the thing is, my wife and I have been together for almost 15 years, so we literally saw this kid grow up. We took him out to the movies, to the beach, etc. We sometimes even joke to my parents that he was our practice baby. My wife has a tendency to distrust people in general, as a lot of people in her life have let her down in the past. Imagine how betrayed and hurt she was when she found out someone she trusted and loved dearly betrayed her like that. Honestly, if I wasn't consoling my wife then, I probably would have gone through with the initial idea and beat the ever-living crap out of my brother. After she calmed down and went to sleep, I called my sister and talked about the situation. My sister and I are close, given that we're Irish twins. 
I feel like she needed to know because she has two teenage daughters herself, and who knows what my brother would do to them if given the chance. We talked, and she was clearly mad. She loves my wife like a sister, and they are quite close themselves. She said that she would support whatever decision we made, and that our brother would also be unwelcome at her place for the foreseeable future. Then we confronted my brother. At first he denied it, but when I showed him the evidence, he started ugly crying and begging us to forgive him. I gave him an ultimatum. Either he lets me in his phone, laptop, and delete everything, or I call the police. There was so much more crap on his computer than I initially thought. So many more stolen pictures of my wife that were definitely taken without consent. That fricker even recorded the audio of us having sex. Who does that? So after hours of me looking for as much crap as possible, and pretty much clearing most of his hard drive, he eventually left without much of a fight. Oh, and we definitely threw out my wife's defiled underwear, and are most likely going to have the room he stayed in cleaned professionally. I checked, and thankfully he didn't have any hidden cameras anywhere. Oh, and if you're wondering how he got the pictures of my wife in a towel, the shower for the masters doesn't have hot water yet, so my wife uses the shared one in the same area. She would usually walk out of the bathroom with just a towel and go and change in our walk-in closet. This shouldn't have been a problem, because the guest bedroom was in a different part of the house, far from the main bedrooms, and it had its own bathroom, so my brother had no reason for being there. Needless to say, my wife is still shaken up about the whole thing, which is why I didn't think about writing an update until now. I'm sorry, but my wife's well-being is my priority above anything else. My mum eventually called me, asking what happened. She seemed very confused, so I figured my brother didn't tell her anything at all. I told her what happened, and needless to say, it did not end well. She kept asking me to forgive my brother and take him back in. She ranted about how difficult it would be to support him, and how what I'm doing is breaking the family apart. I let her talk till I eventually said my brother would no longer be welcome in my home. I told her that she needed to get him therapy, and that, until then, there was no chance we would ever see him. My mum told me she'd talk to my sister about it, and I said, good luck, she's mad at him too. Not sure what's going to happen to our family now. The reason why we got the big house was because we wanted everyone to come over during the holidays and stay with us, but I'm not sure if my parents will at this point, and there's no chance my brother is ever coming back anytime soon. Thankfully, my sister is 100% on my side, and we're going to talk about what we're doing for Thanksgiving soon. My wife hasn't really been the same either, but she's getting better now that my brother is gone. We're talking about therapy, which is something she's willing to try out. We took a drive to the beach earlier. Chill guys, we didn't leave the car. And we talked about the future. We both agreed that after this whole COVID thing is over, we're going to finally start our family with kids. We want two. Being a mum is something she's always wanted, but we both wanted to be financially secure enough to give them a good future, and for us to also be in a position where we didn't have to work so much and just spend time with them. The sparkle in her eyes when we talked about our life together with kids told me that while things aren't good right now, we're going to be okay. I honestly can't wait to be a dad myself. So yeah, long story short, brother is gone. Wife is still sad, sister is on my side, but mum isn't, and I'm going to be a dad in a few years. Thanks to everyone who gave their advice. It honestly helped clear my head and make the right decision to tell my wife first. Oh, and to answer questions that may come up, no, we did not want to go to the police. My brother deleted everything voluntarily and left without a trace. I'm sure the pictures are still out there somewhere. Thankfully, they aren't too explicit, and it would severely damage my wife's reputation. And no, we aren't going to try and get pregnant or anything like that. We plan on adopting, which is something we both talked about early on. So again, thanks to everyone who messaged and commented. I may not have read everything, nor have I replied to everyone, but rest assured you are all greatly appreciated.
Alright guys, that's where I'm going to end today's video. I really do hope you enjoyed it, and maybe even learned something that you didn't know before. If you haven't already, please do feel free to click that like button, as it really does help me in the YouTube algorithm. And if you haven't already, and you love today's video, please feel free to subscribe. I would love it a lot. Also, big, big, big shout out to all my Patreon members and channel subscribers. You guys are all up on the screen right now. I love you. I love your faces. Also, I love seeing you guys all chatting down below in the comments, it brightens my day to see the stories that you guys share and just the kind words you guys always have for my videos, as well as everyone else in the videos, I love you too. But honestly, your ongoing support means the world to me, and I just love it so much that you guys were able to support a career for myself that I invest so much time into. And you guys honestly motivate me to work harder each and every day to put more love into the videos for you guys. If you guys have watched this far in the video and you haven't already subscribed on Patreon or become a channel member, that's cool, you don't have to, but there are links down below. Uh, you can donate any amount of money, pledge that any month, cancel whenever, I'm completely cool with it. It's just there for you to support me if you'd like to go the extra mile. And I'll go the extra mile for you guys by putting out new amazing content every single day. With that said guys, I really hope you have a good day, night, sleep, bath, time at work, whatever you're up to today. This has been Marky, I'll see you in the next amazing video. Bye.